in Raleigh. They're calling it the new game in town. What was once an offensive-driven team is now defense-oriented. Last Saturday, the elusive Brian Randall had nowhere to go against the swarming pack, and he suffered through 10 sacks. Today, they host Wake Forest. The Demon Deacons come to town on a three-game winning streak and a well-rounded offense led by quarterback Corey Randolph and tailback Chris Barclay. The third-ranked offense in the ACC meets the number one defense in the country. It's Wake Forest and North Carolina State in a classic gridiron battle next. The homecoming crowd at Carter Finley Stadium files in, ready to take their seats. Have been waiting a month and a year to get back at the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Welcome inside Carter Finley Stadium as Citgo presents Atlantic Coast Conference football. Today, the Wake Forest Demon Deacons take on the Wolfpack of NC State. Good afternoon, everybody. Steve Martin here along with Rick Doc Walker, two teams buoyed by great success last week, ready for really a gateway win here today. And one of those two teams really feels good about the way it plays defense. And that's NC State. Forget about a year ago, Reggie Herring, the defensive coordinator, has really sick the dogs in this Wolfpack defense. Here you see Pat Thomas going after Brian Randall of Virginia Tech in a siege. You talk about a line and wave of Wolfpack. Well, they're eating him up. That was one of ten sacks last week up in Blacksburg. Now watch the game here. You're going to see Manny Lawson run an inside linebacker safety blitz. So the end goes out. Here comes the safety untouched Marcus Hudson. And once again, Randall feels the bite of the Wolfpack defense. They were relentless a week ago. When you talk about the Wake Forest offense, you say it's razzle-dazzle, it's misdirection. Hey, it's bread and butter ground attack right there, led by Chris Barclay. And Barclay's the guy averaging four yards to crack on the ground. Not only can he give you the hard inside yards, but he's got the speed to break one deep. As far as our Toyota keys of the game are concerned, they both regard moving the chains early. And you better move them early and often. If you look at what's got to happen first down for Wake Forest, they've got to have success on first down. Stay out of those obvious passing situations. And, of course, for North Carolina State, find a way to complement a pretty good ground attack. Mr. Rivers is in San Diego. These kids have got to give the, take some pressure off the young quarterback. When we come back, Scott Przewanski will have a word with NC State football coach Chuck Amato about his quarterbacks, his offense, and other things. All that and more when we come back to Raleigh right after this. The Sitco ACC Game of the Week is being brought to you by Sitco, fueling the greatest of American sports. By Cooper Tires. By Bell South. By Aaron Sales and Lease Ownership. By Advance Auto Parts. By Chevrolet. And by BB&T. Cloudy skies greet the sellout crowd of 55,000 at Carter Finley Stadium for today's game between the Wolfpack and Wake Forest. Let's get out to the sidelines where Scott Rosmanski sitting in for Mike Hogwood has this all tile sideline connection. We talked a lot about the defense, but offensively you have to have a reason to crack a smile a little bit with the way T.A. McClendon has been running the ball of late. Well, yeah, he's been healthy. You know, that's the biggest smile that we can crack is he's, he's been healthy the second and third game that he played. He, did not, he was not healthy in the first game. And if we can keep him healthy, he'll get better and better, and he'll make the linemen better, and he'll make the quarterbacks better, and hopefully. Uh, quickly about the quarterbacks. I know we'll see both of them today with the rotation. From there, will you just go with the feel of who has a hot hand? Wait and see. <laughs> Wait and see. Spoken like a true coach, guys. That's head coach Chuck Amato. We are set to go. NC State and Wake Forest. It's homecoming in Raleigh and kickoff is next. NC State won the coin toss. They have elected to defer their option in the second half. They'll be kicking off. John Duraney to do the honors for the Wolfpack. He handles all the placement kicking. He also does the punting. And back deep to return. It'll be Kevin Marion and Micah Andrews. Two young speedsters, Andrews, had a pretty good week last week against Boston College. And we are underway at Raleigh. This is Marion, two yards deep. Marion busts outside. 
and is brought down very, very quickly at the 20 yard line. Well, last year, Wake Forest beat the 14th ranked Wolfpack on their own turf. Today, state players are looking for revenge. That embarrassment they gave us last year, I mean, that eats me up. They really just got into us last year. I mean, plain and simple, they, they just beat us. I mean, there was nothing, nothing else. They, they got in us early, and then they had their way with us. But now you're coming up here to rally, you know, we just, we're fully focused and we're ready. You're ready to go out there and, and uh, get revenge on them. Corey Randolph brings Wake Forest up at his own 28-yard line. There's the pitch, Barkley around the corner, and there's running room. And possibly another first down out to the 39-yard line. As you look at Corey Randolph, last year he was 8 for 10 against the Wolfpack. He's had three touchdown passes and only thrown one up for grabs. He's a junior out of Lake City, Florida. And he powers the Demon Deacons to a first down with a handoff to Chris Barclay. And there you see Chris on the sidelines leading ground gainer, as Doc said, almost for a carry. Now what a way to start a golf ball game. Wow. Yeah, 10-yard gain. First and 10 from the 38-yard line. That's Marion in motion. State showing blitz, they bring one. Here's the pass incomplete for Marion in the flats. Let's take a look at our Chevy starting lineups as we look at the backs and receivers for the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Willie Idolette, team high per reception. Chris Barclay, Dan Callahan, the fullback. Nate Morton, Zach Selman. You don't see Jason Anderson, he'll not play today. Blake Lindgren, an Outland Trophy candidate on the watch list at center and an experienced front line that is developing day by day. Second down and 10, Wake Forest handoff. Barclay picks his way through, and there's big yardage at midfield. Into NC State territory, and he's brought down at the 48-yard line. Pat, De uh, Pat Thomas with the tackle. Let's take a look at the rest of the NC State defense right now and look at up front. Manny Lawson, Walker Camp, Defensive Player of the Week with three sacks against Virginia Tech. Williams, McCargo, and Tank Tyler up front. The linebackers, Pat Thomas made that tackle. Oliver Hoyt, Stephen Tullock. Marcus Hudson is uh, headlining the defensive secondary with Maddox, Edwards, and Lamont Reed, who has scored four times in non-offensive touchdowns. All right, bookkeeping out of the way, ready to play some football. First and ten. State shows blitz. They bring one. Randolph runs. And he's sacked for a loss. Brought down at the 49-yard line of Wake Forest. Again, Pat Thomas leading the charge. Well, it's the first time they were able to fight back and show some muscle. Wake Forest really had them on the heels. This time, it's just beating people man on man. Once again, every time you see the Wolfpack get penetration, they do it in bunches. NC State last week, you see the play again. They tackled Virginia Tech 26 times for negative yardage. Yeah, well, Lawson there, he was an animal. She was. Second down, about 12. Little screen pass deflected Ooh. dangerously. They had it. Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> Out of Chris Davis's hands. They had a jailbreak in the making. If they hook up, the band is playing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. See that again. The way you beat pressure is, again, indirectly, you try to get the ball in soft spots. Oh. And right up there, folks, would have been touchdown. They had the numbers working in their advantage for Wake Forest. Wake Forest, look at their third down conversions, Doc. 56%, but they're staring at third and long here. Morton in motion. Idle at wide white. Looking to Morton complete. And he's brought down shy of the first down. The stop made there by A.J. Davis. Davis. Now Davis with a sure tackle. They saw the blitz and it came onside. Right-handed quarterback. He could see the blitz. Had to break off by Morton. Just couldn't get there. And that happened because of the lost yardage. Once again, Reggie Herring, the coordinator for the Wolfpack, an absolute maniac. He gets these guys so cranked up, they love him, and they respond to him as well. Devontae Edwards is back to receive the kick. Uh, Ryan Plackemeyer, one of the top punters in the ACC. Fourth down and two, it's a gain of 10. There's the kick by Plackemeyer. Edwards will get away from it, rolls into the end zone for a touchback, and that's where NC State will have it first and ten. And their starting quarterback this afternoon will be Jay Davis, the junior in his fourth year out of Clearwater, Florida. The successor to Phillip Rivers, as you will, shares the position with Marcus Stone, but was given the nod as the starting quarterback. He's thrown three touchdowns, and he's passed four interceptions thus far this season. He'll bring the Wolfpack back out on the field when we come back right after this timeout. Uh, Carter Finley construction on the Wolfpack Towers. There you see to the left of your screen. Every seat sold out. 
first and ten coming up here for NC State at their own 20 yard line. Gabe Davis play action the pass to Tremaine Hall out in the flash and there's not much room for him to go brought down by Brad White and maybe for a loss of a yard on the play. Let's take a look at Davis here. He is uh, as we said from Clearwater Florida 331 yards 57 percent of his passes are complete. And he's thrown three interceptions thus far this season. Four, actually, to go with three touchdowns. Big shoes to fill at Phillip Rivers, young man out with the San Diego Chargers. And, again, it's a process that you, know, you have to go through it when, you, when a great one leaves your campus. Got the, an interesting formation. They've got Chris Coleman lined up way up to the top side. A screen pass set out there. Complete. This is Washington, and he has knocked out of bounds. Interesting play up to the 33 yard line, a 13 yard game. It's a great piece of running. Let's take a look at the NC State offense. Of course, T.A. McClendon, 29 career touchdowns. Tremaine Hall, who we've seen, Richard Washington, Brian Clark, T.J. Williams, the tight end. Jed Paulson anchors at center. Chris Colmer coming off the injury. Harris, McKeon, and Newby. It's a great front line for NC State. Would you preface by saying the tight end? The tight end. Yeah, we like that from now on. Particular emphasis, all -E the capital letters. Yes, They've got McClendon lined up as a wide receiver. This is Bobby Washington, and he is smacked oh, hard man. right at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> and Joel Scales was there to hit him in that front line. That was thunder. And also there, Giles Tucker. Let's take a look at the Wake Forest defense. Jerome Nichols, two career interceptions in his career as a lineman. Matt Robinson, Joel Scales, Giles Tucker, the linebackers, are three good ones. Theron Bracey, of course, Pierre Easley, and Brad White, five tackles for loss. Eric King has seven pass interceptions in his career. Marcus Magruder, Josh Gaddis, and Patrick G. Second down and about 11 on a loss of one. Washington in motion to pitch to McClendon. Lead blocker out front. He's a low, but bringing him down is Josh Gaddis, and there's a flag on the play as he was brought down at the 40-yard line after about an eight-yard game. Strong blocking up front. Rick to the tight end. You see him right here on the edge. See, they get that circle there. They get the wave, and then you get a running alley and a back that knows what to do. And you heard Coach Amato talk about that in the pregame about their success with T.A. McClendon. We have a five-yard face mask. 22 in the defense. On the end of the run, first down. All right. At five yards. And that pushes the Wolfpack out to the 45-yard line. Chuck Amato, the ever-present sunglasses. It's a, a high, cloudy day today. Nine straight wins against Wake at Carter-Finley Stadium. Have to go back to 1984 to find the last Deacon win here in Raleigh. First and ten. Play action for Jay Davis. Has some time. And has to throw it away. Good decision. Yep. Great, great coverage in the secondary. Crowd will have a problem with that one, but you're right. He made the right call. Yeah, what is the crowd? No. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't in on the meeting. <laughs> Not at all. No. That's right, buddy. But I'll tell you this. Um, that's the decision you want a young quarterback to make. Don't force it, especially when you happen to be associated with the number one defense in America. Don't have to win it with your offense. Yeah. Both coaches are feeling that today. Two freshmen Dunlap is out on the top side to the left. Four wide receivers out of the shotgun and second and ten. Inside handoff, T.A. McClendon tripped up once, but he's got first down running. In Wake territory at the 43-yard line, the tackle made by Patrick G., but it's a 13-yard gain for McClendon. Well, like Termaine Hall is the guy you're going to see at 21 in the red, right side of your screen, right about there. See that block, folks? Now that's a young man there getting the job done. Hands a little high, but hey, you know, <laughs> stop being so picky. Yeah, yeah. Running back, 5'10", 185 pounds. That's a great effort. Tremaine Hall making the block there, and Patrick G. who eventually got the tackle. First and 10. At the 43. And off of Clinton. He's been the bust here early. And Joel Scales is there along with Eric King coming up from the safety spot or the cornerback spot to make the tackle. It's a loss on the play of one. Scales. I saw Scales in the pregame warm-up, buddy. He's stacked in all the right spots. You believe me, this young man spends a lot of time in the squat rack. 283 pounds. He's six foot tall, so it means he's got leverage. And at that time, he was overpowered. 
Wake Forest a little small size-wise at the ends. Uh, Matt Robinson, 226. If you look at Jim Grove and what he's done, 10 of his 21 wins have come from behind. This is the eighth play of the drive for the Wolfpack. Started at their own 20. Second down and 12. Pass to the flat. Almost picked off by. That was Magruder. Pick him in. Yep. Could have been either or. Brian Clark, the intended receiver on the play. Well, a little game on the outside. Linebacker defensive end, but you know, again, this is about decisions. We're going to talk about this all afternoon long. That Jay Davis has got to make good decisions, sound. He didn't have to win the Heisman today. What he's got to do is put that defense <laughs> in a position to win. Well, Jermaine Hall says, hey, make the decisions, make them quick. Yeah, make them quick. Live with it. They'll support him. DJ Williams is split out as a tight end. Brian Clark split out as a split into the right side. Washington to the left out of the shotgun. Jay Davis on third down and 11. And a flag flies. Looks like it could be delay of game. I think you see the Demon Deacons defensively, you know, changing up, changing things up, playing with his Play mind. Game. By the offense, five yards, still third down. Well, NC State thrown off schedule here after they moved into Wake Forest territory. And look at the penalties. NC State leads the league in penalty the yardage, 91.7 a game, and they've just picked up their first five. You know, a young, inexperienced quarterback is a defensive coordinator's dream come true. Yes. And you change things up, you move around, you kind of shake, try to rattle his brain. Well, let's see what Dean Hood comes up with on the Wake Forest sideline this time around for Jay Davis, who's back to throw. Blitz is on, hit as he let it go, and knocked down at wow. the point. King knocked it away from Brian Clark, who limps off the field, but there was heavy pressure in the face of Jay Davis. Steve-O, that's shake, rattle, and roll here. Woo. In your face, you're talking about a game running between the tackle guard gap. They ran a good stunt, so you have pressure right in his face and good coverage in the secondary. And on to punt. John Duraney leads the ACC, as you can see right there. Willie Idolette, who brought one back for a touchdown against the Wolfpack of 50 yards. Here we go. He'll get away from this, and it takes a great Wolfpack bounce. And Wake will be backed up inside their five-yard line. Big kick. Big kick. 48-yard kick, and there's no return. Don't be afraid to punt, huh? All the great coaches say that. Don't be afraid to punt. Chuck said that in our yeah. discussion yesterday, yep. and that's why. We heard it from Ralph Region a week ago. Don't be afraid to punt. Timeout on the field. No score here in Raleigh. Back after this word from your local ACC station. That's all the real estate Wake Forest has to work with. Three yards in play. They're into the field. First and ten for Corey Randolph and the Demon Deacon. Hand off Barclay, big hole left side. Here he goes. Oh, brother. Out to the 13-yard line, and that, that gets you some insurance right there. It's another first down. Barclay's rushed for already for three. What a stud. I mean, this kid, he makes it happen, and he makes it happen in a physical way, but also shows you quickness. Great trap block, make a guy miss. I mean, at that point, it's all about the three stooges there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> first and ten. Up inside, this is Micah Andrews, redshirt freshman from Duluth, Georgia. We talked to Jim Grove last night about the type of guy that he's getting in his program. He says, if you're having trouble with him in high school, I don't want him because the high school coaches have more time with him than I do. He's smart, man. No time for foolishness. You offer somebody a quality education and an opportunity to play big-time football. If they don't see it, you know, let, them, let somebody else deal with it. Micah Andrews for seven, second down and three down. Wake Forest, scoreless ball game. Out of the shotgun, it's Randolph. Hands it off inside. And Manny Lawson drops the ball carrier that time. That's Chris Barclay. Great so, surge. Man, the offensive line, you talked about Lindgren to start the game off. And, you know, it all happens when you have a center like Blake, a guy who can anchor, who you can get behind and get good push. Well, that's where it all starts. 300 pounder with great leverage, good hand placement. Buddy, that's they're invaluable. We've had first team all ACCers on the front line each year that Jim Grobe has been at Wake Forest. Hand off on the air under round, reverse. Wiley Idolette, and he steps out of bounds at the 33 yard line. Show that play a lot. Lamont Reed drove him out of bounds. It's a six yard game, but Wake Forest ground game is picking up. And they're doing it in a number of different ways. 
between the guard tackle gap. They've been outside. They run misdirection. They put a defense on his heels. And the Wolfpack, they like to attack. I mean, a ferocious cage. I mean, red, rabid dogs. They get after you. But right now, they're in check. Second and a short five, Doc, right here. Back to throw. Randolph. Pass to the flats complete. Micah Andrews has the first down. And Pat Thomas has to drive him out of bounds at the 46-yard line. It's a gain of 12 on the play for Wake Forest. That time the run set up the pass and play out. And you can, it's so clear. Where was the pressure? The Wolfpack are on the heels. They thrive off putting you in a position to where you're uncomfortable. Right now, that role has been reversed. That's it. Wake Forest Demon Deacons who are on schedule here. First and 10 at their own 46. Inside handoff and blown up at the point. The tackle was made inside by Mario Williams. John McCargo, the first man to hit him. Look at Williams and the size of that young man. 6'7", 291 pounds. Awesome. It really is. I mean, that entire front four. But there you see, that's just brutal strength inside by McCargo. I mean, he just decided at this point he was going to dominate the line of scrimmage. That's awesome. Loss of a couple on the play gets it back to second and ten. Out of the shotgun, Gratz gets his on the pass incomplete, and good coverage on the play that time by Lamont Reed on Chris Davis. That's Wolf Pack football. Yep. Everybody's under pressure. The quarterback is under pressure. The receivers are under pressure. Your blood pressure's got high. You know everything has put you in a frenzy. When they can get you going that way, buddy, you're in trouble. Now check it out. They come from the outside. You got pressure up the, up the top. You look over him, receiver. He got people harassing him. It's all about pressure. Third down and ten. Four yards shy of midfield. Maurice Charles put the pressure on that time. Here comes a blitz from the safety. Two are gone. Pass incomplete. Thrown off the shoulder of Marion. A.J. Davis. Coming up out of the nickel position to make the play defensively. Not much room between the white and the red in that secondary. <laughs> you better believe it. A.J. Davis again. Their corners here at State, they have to play man up. And they don't shy away from it. Boy, it's a lot of responsibility, but all the good corners I've ever met, they want to be man up. There's Tremaine Hall capable of breaking it. And he's also Devontae Edwards is down there, too, at the 10-yard line. That was a great series. Despite the fact that Wake did a great job to get to pick up some real estate. Well, they've got some real estate. It'll give them a little bit of field position here. They're going to try to plant this punt inside the one. Uh -oh. No. Boy, great effort. Just barely did it. Blockemeyer got a good foot into it. It's a 54-yard punt, but it'll come out to the 20-yard line first and 10 for the Wolfpack once again. Imagine living in the ultimate college football bowl game experience. Five bowl games in one week. You and three friends will fly on a private jet to the biggest games of the year. Eight straight days of college football heaven. And that's what I mean, are waiting for you in the biggest blitz the college bowl world's ever known. Visit your Cooper Tire dealer or ultimatebowltour.com to register. Nice of you to loan your plane, Mr. Martin. Anytime I can be of help. Big of you. Real I big the, of you. I can I get the second engine to work. Players to watch this afternoon, two game breakers, Tremaine Hall and Willie Idolette. Idolette there on your left and Tremaine Hall on the right. They've done some damage in a variety of positions for both teams. Here's T.A. McClendon talking about damage. And he gets hit oh, boy, several run. times and gets back remarkably docked to the line of scrimmage and even adds a yard. Now that's a running back. Because that play should have gone nowhere, and he was determined to make it go somewhere. And you spin, and Chuck Amato talks about him being healthy, which makes a big difference. It's the only way you can play this game right. Dick Porti, his offensive uh, running back coach, marvels over this kid. He says this kid has it all. Well, they also hope he can be healthy. And if he's not healthy, they've got backups that are outstanding. Darrell Blackman, Bobby Washington, Reggie Davis. And right now, it's been the T.A. McClendon show. And, oh, he is blown up. Right up front, Jonathan Abadi. Jonathan Abadi, a redshirt freshman, the leading tackler among linebackers from Powder Springs, Georgia. Met T.A. McClendon head on. Buddy, that was a rude awakening there. Wow. I love that. I mean, that's the hammer hit so far. That's, that's got to be first place. Of our illustrious Hammer Award. I mean, that's rejection city there. He still head got to head. Up. Head to head. Now, he might be knocked out right now. He doesn't realize it. Yeah, no. <laughs> but, buddy, he doesn't know where he's at. He's going to hold him on the sideline, hold him up. Third down and seven. No score. Jay Davis out of the shotgun for the Wolfpack. Takes the handoff. Pass to the flats. Washington complete. Turns the corner. Pushes.
rushes ahead and he's close to the first down maybe a yard shy of it at the 29. Riley Swanson comes up to make the play for Wake Forest. Great effort. Can't discount Barnett 13 wide receiver the pressure that's on the wide house to block and hold that position to give their teammate a chance. Six yard gain punting unit moves on to Chuck Amato's Wolfpack. Smart move. Yeah. They had a big character win at Virginia Tech a week ago, 17-16. For the second straight year, Wake Forest came from behind and beat Boston College. Here's John Duraney. His first one was a beauty, a 48 punt, 48 yards. He's the ACC's leading punter. And that is Willie Idolette. Both of these clubs have superior conditioning. That's why they win in the fourth quarter. Line drive kick, fair catch called for. Idolette vacates the region, and it takes a Wolfpack roll down to the 25-yard line. It'll be a 46 yard kick for Duraney so an impressive 47 yard average already in his first two punts of the day and Wake Forest will have the football back we're scoreless at Carter Finley 442 left to go in this first quarter. They come back quickly here on first down run the ball with Chris Barkley off the right side there's not much there you see uh, Herndon Wayne Herndon Raymond Brooks. Manny Lawson and John McCargo make up the front line this time around as Barkley comes to the sideline. We've got two of the ACC's active career rushing leaders here this afternoon. Barkley leads the list, and T.A. McClendon's not too far behind in fourth. Second down and ten now coming up for Wake Forest. One man blitzes, now two. Randolph tries to run out, but the Wolf Pack blows it down. Stephen Tullock in on the play with Raymond Brooks. Tullock. Maybe the one of the best linebackers in the ACC. He's out of Miami, Florida. Heads to the sideline. Let's take a look at our Aaron scoreboard. Lots of early afternoon action today. Florida State down in Tallahassee leading the Tar Heels. Scoreless between Virginia Tech and West Virginia in Blacksburg this afternoon. And Florida, Arkansas battle of three and one teams going at it. Iowa leading Michigan State in the Big Ten. Four two from Rutgers scoreless in the first, and we told you stay out of long yarded situation if you wait. A swing pass, Barclay complete, looking for running room up the sideline and dragged out of bounds, shy of the first down after an eight-yard gain to the 34-yard line by Troy Graham. What a tackle. What a difference tackling makes. And guys that can get the job done. We've seen that A.J. Davis had a great tackle. Troy Graham comes in there, gets the premium back, and stops him and brings the punting unit out. Heck of a series for the Wolfpack defensively. They've had a couple of them back to back here, Doc, because uh, Wake Forest didn't have even a sniff of success in that drive. Right. Come if, you, on. if you fail on first down against the Wolf Pack, then you just wrote yourself a death sentence. Well, we've talked about one of the keys first down success. So far, Wake hasn't had a whole lot of it. It's a beautiful punt oh, by Blackamire. Look at it go, and it's down, taken by Tremaine Hall dangerously at the one. Hall heads for the sidelines. G brings him down. I'm not sure, Doc, why he took that punt. Playmaker. He must have saw a scene that it wasn't going to go into the end zone and didn't yeah. want to take it on the one. A 65-yard punt coupled with a 21-yard return. Big one play. great play, he gets another. Stevie saw, he had to see the rotation of the football and noticed that it was going to die on him. And you make a decision, buddy, then you better hope that that speed can carry you through. Because it would have been a long walk back to the sidelines to face Chuck Amato if he had been brought down on the two. He brings it out to the 20, same result. Big move. But he made a judgment call, and the Wolfpack will live by it. Playmaker. Washington to the short side. Ryan Clark split out wide, hand off a Clendon. We've got Marcus Stone in at quarterback now. As McClendon runs the ball up to the 24-yard line. Let's look at Marcus Stone, the quarterback. He's a redshirt freshman from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Chuck Amato talked about him yesterday. The team has a lot of confidence when he's in the ball game. He's a, a live wire, maybe a little more outgoing than the Jay Davis. Uh, but an interesting contrast. Noel, uh, the defense of the offensive coordinator for uh, Noel Mazzoni for NC State said, if we need a two-minute drill, Davis is in there. If yeah. we want to mount a charge, then it's going to be Stone. Here's the handoff. This is Washington, and he's got speed. Two freshmen knocked out of bounds at the 42-yard line. It's a gain of 17. Warren Braxton had the tackle, but we've got a flag back at the 25. Well, Richard Washington, the wide receiver, either had a great block or may have been penalized. 
<laughs> One way or the other. Yeah, either way. <laughs> I think he's a man in the spotlight. And there's Chuck Amato, not happy with the turn of events that took away a big run that time. One thing that Doc Holliday, the wide receivers coach for State, he gets out of his guys a great effort. Holding. Number 78 in the offense. 10 yards in the previous spot. Repeat second down. That's James Newby. That was an offensive lineman. Yeah, so Washington did his job. Yep. Excellent out on the edge. ACC football is brought to you in part by Chevrolet. The yardage backs them back. To the 15 yard line, where it's second down and 15. Marcus Stone at the helm. Back to throw. Money. Magruder headed to the end zone. That's the eighth interception of the year, and the Wake Forest team and Deacons are on the board. Oh boy, Dean Hood, boys, that's down and distance played right to his Demon Deacons in their hands. You talk about Telegraph City. That's where youth really showed its ugly nose <laughs> for Marcus Stone. It's all about youth. Can't throw across the field and telegraph the pass against a good defense. Marcus Magruder's sixth career interception. It's the eighth of the year for the Deacons, all told, and it results in a score to put Wake Forest on top with an 18-yard interception return. That was Noski for the point after, and it is good. And Wake Forest strikes first with a defensive touchdown. Watch it again. Again, watch his eyes. He comes back there. He's straight. There he shows you. He committed to it. Great catch, run, strike up the band. Black and goal is on a roll. Last season, NC State was ranked 14th when they took on Wake Forest at Grove Stadium. Philip Rivers passed for a career high 433 yards, and that was the only good news for the pack. Midway through the second quarter, the Deeks had a 25 point lead. Chris Barkley rushed for 90 yards, scored a touchdown. Willie Idolette returned this punt 50 yards for another score. And the Deacons had the Wolfpack on their heels all afternoon, and that's where they got them right now. Courtesy of Marcus Magruder, his 18-yard interception return for a touchdown puts the Deacons on top here, 6-0 with a point after 7, and Jim Grobe's Demon Deacons are in the lead. 12-3 and three record versus in-state rivals while at Wake, that is an important measure of success. Well, that's the fear factor, and, and he's not scared. So it better be on, the, on his opponents. This, this young man has done a whale of a job in instilling a belief that Wake Forest can play with anyone. And that's the most important element I think he brings to the table, a belief. There's Noski getting ready to kick it away. Bobby Washington and Marcus Hudson are back deep for NC State. There's Hudson. And the Wolfpack immediately put on their heels here by Wake Forest. Wake Forest wasn't accomplishing much offensively, but Magruder on the third, on the second and long play, was able to come up with a pick. This is Washington, and he'll down at seven yards deep in the end zone. So let's go to the sideline. Scott Przewanski sitting in for Mike Hogwood. Quite a first half underway. Yeah, guys, you know, after that interception, a number of the NC State players hung their heads as they came off the field. You look to leadership at that time, and for NC State, it was Tremaine Hall. We talked to him yesterday. He was very adamant about great play and consistency from his offensive unit, and he wanted to pick the guys up, so he said, hey, we're not having any of this. Let's get back out there, and let's get a TD next time. Chuck Amato sending Marcus Stone back out there after throwing the interception. Yeah, I like that. I mean, you don't want to kill the kid's confidence. He's not the only guy to throw an interception today. The question now is can he back it up and make up for with a big throw or big run? Sterling Hicks split wide to the top side. The slot man is Tremaine Hall. Rolling to that side, Marcus Stone. Coleman with a big block on the corner. And Stone turns it into a nice gain of six yards out to the 26 yard line. But I like you that. see the block that Colmer threw. Yeah, well, you know, State, they're not going to be bullied, number one. And they're not going to let one bad play stop them. Hey, you watch the guys up front. See, that's getting it done right there. That's getting it done by your center. Two great centers in this game. The Wolfpack will compete. They're going to fight till the bitter end. Six-yard game brings up second and four. Washington in motion. Pitch now comes to Washington. This is Bobby Washington, the true freshman, and he struggles to get back to the line of scrimmage. Coming up to make the play for Wake Forest, Karone Bracey. Number two, 
Good job of force, too. I mean, that's the key, playing within the framework of defense. And, you know, Dean Hood's group, or Demon Deacons, they just, they're where they're supposed to be. Well, they changed their alignment yeah. this year. Yeah. They were 3 5 last year, mm -hmm. remember? And they're a four man front now, more conventional front. And actually, they told us last night that that is really the front for the future for them, a year down the line. But they responded so well to it early this season. Third down, three. Wake Forest leading by seven, NC State with the ball. Stone pass complete to Maine Hall, short of the first down. Gain of a yard, if that, to the 29. Riley Swanson with excellent coverage on the outstanding wide out, Tremaine Hall. Now confidence is a tremendous additive. And here you watch up front, the stout, balls thrown out, where you're supposed to be. And Riley Swanson, as you mentioned, does a good job head on the right place. And they with a little swagger now. See, Wake has a bit of a swagger. I don't know if we give him enough credit for that. And that's a new deal. Here's Duraney with another punt. He's averaged 47 in his first two. This will be shorter. Idolet picks it up. And it's going nowhere. Brought down in a hurry after a 47-yard kick. Right on average, a three-yard return. John Duraney been very consistent. Next week, we will see these Wake Forest Demon Deacons at home before what should be the biggest crowd in their history. As Virginia Tech comes calling, they travel a lot of folks. There could be as many as 40,000 at Grove Stadium next week. Be with us for our Sitco ACC Game of the Week. The Virginia Tech Hokies and the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. They're practically next door neighbors just some 90 miles apart. First and 10 Wake Forest at their own 37 yard line. And Ben Mock is now in the ball game as the quarterback on the fourth series of the game. Mock is a redshirt freshman who threw a touchdown pass against Clemson in his very first collegiate pass. First and ten. Mock the throw. Will tuck it under. Flag on the play. Gets up the sideline and bulls his oh, way man. to midfield. But I think it's coming back. The preliminary indication is a hold against Wake Forest. I love that finish. That's how you welcome yourself to the game. Big block by Wesley Bryant, left tackle for Wake Forest, going in that great matchup with Manny Lawson. Let's see what the penalty is. There's Mock out of Kenton, Ohio. Through an 85 or 75 yard pass completion against Clemson in his first ever play of his college career. I think that was in Death Valley too, right? Yes, it was. So you go Death Valley, now you're here in the sea of red. Oh, that was a, a it was their only the play, loss. The quarter ended. We have a hold. Number 66 of the offense. We'll penalize 10 yards from the previous spot. Extend the one on time down. One on time down to end the quarter. There's the guilty party there. Greg Adkins. Jim Grove not happy because his quarterback had made a pretty good decision and got out of the pocket. Boy, his quarterback uh, showed his manhood on the end of that run. Took a couple of wolf pack with him. Yeah, got to tie up the laces and hit it again on first and 20. Number 27, off the throw, blitz is on, pass complete. That's the fullback. I no, that's the tight end, R.D. Montgomery. Boy, no panic. I want you to watch the boys. Actually, it's Tereshinsky. A Ben Mock. Man, that was that. That was enough pressure where if you faint a heart, you were in a world of trouble. Ten yard gain on the play. Wake Forest with the ball will be come back into the second quarter as they lead seven to nothing. We are back at the start of the second quarter. NC State and Wake Forest in our Citro ACC game of the eighth week. Wake Forest leading here by a 7 0 count. Here's a look at our progress energy progress report for the first quarter. The ground game belongs to Wake Forest, and uh, time of possession belongs to NC State. The total yards to the Demon Deacons, and they've got the only score on the board. An interception returned by Marcus Magruder. He picked it off for Marcus Stone and took it to the end zone for our only score. Wake Forest with the ball first, uh, second down now, and about 11 after a 10 yard game. Ben Mock, redshirt freshman. Blitz coming. Inside handoff, Barclay moves into the open spot and gets to midfield. It's a gain of about 
14 yards. And let's go to the sidelines for this injury update from Scott Brzezlowski. Guys, you can see Andre Maddox working the bike here on the sidelines for NC State. He's their starting rover back, and as you guys know, he plays a huge role in this defensive effort for NC State. This is his third series. He's been on the sideline. He's got a tight hamstring, and he's quite questionable right now to come back into the game. Be a tough loss for them, Andre Maddox. Their top rover, 14 tackles thus far this season. First and 10, Wake Forest. Mock out of the shotgun. Looking to the right side, finds a man open. That's Morton complete at the Wolfpack 42 down to the 39-yard line. Gain of 11 on the play. Bring us up another Wake Forest first down. Well, they're in control. And it, it, you notice there's been no big movement of pressure by the Wolfpack. And so once you neutralize their thrust, now you got a chance to take advantage of it. And the whole key is Barclay. And you talked about it in the open. He's a difference maker in this game. He allows, I don't care who's a quarterback, he allows you an opportunity to do your thing. Marion in motion. Davis to the bottom side. One man blitz. Pass dumped out to Davis, complete. Gets a little bit of running room out to the 36 yard line. We gain a three on the play. A.J. Davis ran Chris Davis out of bounds. And the pros will love Barclay because he also blocks well. If you're going to be a back, a big time back, you've got to be a factor in blitz pickup. And that time he had another great block. So the kid is a premium player. He's up second down and seven. Wolfpack with the other uh, Demon Deacons with their deepest excursion into NC State territory. Inside handoff, hard play, but having none of it was Raymond Brooks. True freshman from Williamsport, Pennsylvania playing behind Mario Williams at that left defensive end. That's why they're new middle Luno. Because they have a guy, they play on your side of the, of the line <laughs> more so than any school in the country. You know, they reestablish the offense of the line of scrimmage going there, they get it, and you're in trouble. And there's a the guy there. I mean, I'm crazy about this guy. Yeah, he plays with his emotion, old linebacker, and he gets in there and he gets these guys pumped up. Defensive coordinator Reggie Herring, third and eight for Wake Forest, up 7-0. They're overloaded to the wide side of the field. Blitz is on, Lawson is in, the pass is complete to Barclay. He's got some good yardage and a Demon Deacon first down at the Wolfpack 23. What an effort. What an effort. And you don't do it alone in football. I mean, it's the ultimate sport for dependency, but that guy right there, that, that Atkinson, you know, you heard he had a penalty series to go, and then he comes out here and makes up for it. A little spin block 62 in white. He comes out here. Now watch him continue to fight. Stay oh, yeah. with it. That's the difference. Give a good back some room, and the rest of it there is his all manhood there, buddy. His desire. 14-yard gain, first and 10. Demon Deacons approaching the red zone. Raymond Brooks stops Barclay that time straight ahead to the 21-yard line. It'll be a gain of about three on the play. You want your offense to be physical first, then have skills, and then, and then be tough. And this is what Wake Forest gives you. And they also give you deception, which is really the, the kryptonite to the Wolfpack. Well, I'll tell you what. One of the things that NC State talked about is that Wake got in their face last year and got in there early. Barashinsky is the wing. Here's Barclay looking for the 20 and gets it inside to about the 18. Hoyt is in there on the tackle along with Presley. Oliver Hoyt, I mean, the guy, he's a, this is an attack dog. I mean, they, last week, the 10 sacks, they had 16 plays, you know, for minus yardage against Virginia Tech. I mean, these guys went in and they just tried to bully Tech. Look at Wake Forest in the red zone. 12 out of 15, or 13 out of 15 they've scored. Our red is in, inside the red zone report. Here they come. Third down and five. Here's Mock handling on the corner. Has the first down and more inside the 10 to the five yard line. <laughs> oh my goodness, Pat Thomas. Boy, he had the Stooges look on his face that time. This kid, Mock, is bringing his A game. You're talking about a challenge. You get two quarterbacks that you can move the ball with. You have something going. Well, Randolph was known as the better running quarterback, but Ben Mock shows his skills there. On a 14-yard run. Gets it down to the six, actually the five-yard line. First and goal. Barclay the setback. He gets the handoff. Gets to the two. 
And driven back, Pat Thomas tries to break him in half down there at the two yard line. Well, Pat's angry. Because what Mock just did to him in the prior play, he, he's an excellent football player. And you go inside, look at the white shirt, see? They are covering up the red shirts. He gets to the second level. Buddy Wake Forest is physical. 62 yards gained on the ground by Chris Barkley already. In 11 carries, second down and goal from the two. Micah Andrews in at fullback. The pitch to Barkley looking for the corner. He's in there, looks like. Or will they mark him down? They're going to mark him down at the one. He went down at the one. They gave him a home spot. And that's what you expect. <laughs> Tell you what, boy. You can look at Pat Thomas there, and again, great football player. He comes up, gets a little tip, just that little brush was enough to hold him back. Great spot. Great spot. Roller hits the dirt. Here we go. Third and goal from the one yard line. Andrews tries his way in. It's close. They've not given the sign yet. Wake Forest says it's in there. Touchdown, Demon Deacon. A march that started at the Wake Forest 37 cap on third and goal by Micah Andrews. And his fourth career touchdown. When in doubt, get behind Big Blake Lingley. Get behind Atkins. I mean, Harvey Jones, those two guards and center. They created that wedge and earned them a score. That's an impressive drive. Wake Forest about to pin a two touchdown lead on NC State before a hush crowd of 55,000. The kick is up and it is good for Matt Wisnowski. And Wake marches down the field. They go 63 yards in 12 plays. Most of it on the ground. The highlight play, of course, a 14-yard rush by Ben Mock that got him inside the 10. They punched it in three plays later. We'll be back. Wake Forest with a two-touchdown lead on North Carolina State here in the second. Ten and a half left to go. Scoring drive, of course, 12 plays, 63 yards. Key on that drive. They were three for three on third down conversions and now three of six on the afternoon. If you talk about that uh, over 50 percent to start off, here we go. This is Dunlap. John Dunlap with a return of the short kick out to the 35 yard line. Let's watch this touchdown run again. It all goes in folks right there right in the middle. And that's where you have to put all that weight training to use. I'm impressed, Steve, with the attitude, the body language, Wake Forest. I mean, they have a little swagger. They're big, they're strong, they got skilled people. They have a lot of confidence in their scheme of football. And I know I always, you know, it, it teed me off to be picked as a homecoming game. <laughs> I mean, you think <laughs> yeah. you have a celebration at my expense, and I'll tell you what, the Demon Deacons aren't having any of that. First and ten. NC State at their own 35-yard line. Marcus Stone at quarterback, T.A. McClendon. A shoestring tackle made right at the line of scrimmage and making it right there, Jonathan Abadi. Abadi in the best in the flying the ointment. I mean, he just comes out of there and can't be blocked. You know, NC State's first. Well, let's see it again. Coming down the line again, you, you see the white shirts disengage a bit. He gets there, gets that ankle, and holds on for dear life. Second down and about nine. Jermaine Hall is in the slot. It's his favorite spot. Over on the right side, Marcus Stone, quarterback draw. Stone picks his way among the white shirts. A body is there, as well as others. Caron Bracey cuts up off the bottom of the pile, and it's a gain of about four yards for Marcus Stone. He's already thrown an interception so far this afternoon. In fact, NC State's just allowed 45 points in three games, Doc. 33 have been a result of turnovers. I'll say this, there's a lot of pushing and shoving going on after the play. And NC State is going to have to stay focused on the play during the play. Because all that stuff afterwards is irrelevant. Third down coming up. We'll pack down 14-0. Stone to throw. Robinson putting pressure on. A one-man blitz of sorts. And Stone is close to the first down and may have it. At the Wolfpack 46 yard line, a gain of seven by Marcus Stone. Marcus Stone is a baller. I mean, plain and simple, this guy makes things happen. A good run 
on the previous play. And here he shows you he can improvise and, he, and he's showing no stage fright. Forget about the interception. The kid is going to, he's going to make plays. He gets you out of trouble and has athletic ability and competitiveness to make it happen. And off goes the T.A. McClendon. Nice block over that left side. Paulson out there along with Leroy Harris. Jonathan Abadi makes the tackle, but not before McClendon picks up another chunk of real estate valued at about five or six yards. This is up to NC State's offensive line to claim possession of this game. They had a young quarterback. Well, that's, we know we said that over and over. That's the deal. Deal with it. And that's what they're doing now. Get that running game going. Get T.A. rolling and come out and compete. There's Paulson. Good look at a great center. Two great centers in this game, as Doc pointed out. Second down and about four. Hand off to Clendon. NC State doing what they are very, very good at, at running the football at about four yards a carry. McClendon is close to a first down. Giles Tucker is there close for the tackle. Strong surge up front. Again, you mentioned Paulson, McKeon Harris. They got to make up their mind, especially those se you know, seniors, that this is it. You know, we can talk about all that stuff after the season. Right now, this is the last chance. You're trailing, and you got to dig down and find a way to get this thing done. Close enough for a measurement, and uh, they'll bring the chains out. While they do that, I do want to talk a little bit about Chris Palmer, and he's one of the bulwarks of that offensive line. Palmer diagnosed last season as having a rare illness called the Parsonage-Turner syndrome causing numbness and pain through his shoulder and arm. He's able to come back, granted a sixth year of eligibility. Big number seven is done this afternoon, and he's making his 38th start of his career today out of Port Jefferson, New York. Now, I remember him as a freshman playing against Florida State. I mean, these kids, he's been around here, and that's what it's all about. And that's why, you know, you got to make, when you're trailing, you got to block that score out and dig down. First and ten. Jermaine Hall is in the slot to the right side. Stone at quarterback, handoff goes Bobby Washington. He slips a bit, but still picks up some yardage out to the 41. It's a gain of five. Brings up third down and five. Our Aaron scoreboard shows some early action among ACC teams this afternoon. Florida State up 14 to six. Tar Heels hanging in there early in the second. Virginia Tech with a Brandon Pace field goal leading West Virginia. Florida 7-0 over Arkansas. Iowa's got a two touchdown lead on Michigan State. And Syracuse in the Big East in the lead. Oklahoma and Texas Tech have been great one today. And the rest of the Aaron scoreboard on second down. And off Washington. First down yardage at the Wake Forest 30-yard line. Brad White on the tackle. But Doc, you said it. NC State's offensive line now starting to make a statement. Yeah, you know, you got to come out sometimes and say, Let's forget all about the tendencies and all the cute formations. We're going to knock your butt off the ball. If you can't deal with it, then you're going to have a long afternoon. And Wake, Wake Forest and Dean Hood and that group now, they're going to have to get in some gaps now. They're going to have to do some zone blitzing. They're going to have to reject some of this, this testosterone that's being displayed right now by NC State. <laughs> Here's Bobby Washington. Straight to the left side. Oh, he jumped the tackle and gets down to the 24. He made three yards in midair that time, six total for the play, and brings up second and four. Well, great story for NC State. Washington was all set, signed, sealed, and delivered for Miami, but they had questions about his ATC score, which was clear by the NCAA clearinghouse. And they asked him to sit out a year and maybe take the test over again. He decided to transfer to NC State with some of his friends from Killian High School, and, oh, Chuck Amato is ecstatic with this true freshman. <laughs> it chucks him. Second down and four after the game of six. Washington alone setback. Two picks to call again. Oh, yeah, that's excellent. He dances. He's still up, but uh, brought down there by Warren Braxton. He'll be shy of the first down. Patrick G also in on the tackle for Wake. Down at the 23-yard line, a gain of two. Boy, make you miss, boy. It's hard to, it's hard to coach that. I mean, you got to recruit it, and that's exactly what they did. Wake, I mean, NC State is on the verge of something now, and they. The home team and trailing. I mean, the crowd, I don't know if the crowd recognizes it yet, but they're in the midst of it. And no mistake thus far. That's the key. No mistakes. Big third down call, and it's big enough to call a timeout here at the six minute mark. Wake Forest up 14 to nothing. We've got a timeout at Carter Finley. We'll be back after this word from your local station.
The $23 million Wendell Murphy Football Center graces the south end zone here at Carter Finley Stadium. It is a state of the art facility. The weight room goes the width of the stadium. It's quite a facility for Wolfpack football. Right now, the Wolfpack looking at third down and three. They're at the Wake Forest 23 yard line. Marcus Stone going upstairs, has Brian Clark. Can't hang on. Didn't have a whole bunch of real estate to work with. Wiley Swanson there on the cover. Well, that was a good, good idea, but boy, John Richter, he had his tight end right in the seam, wide open. And again, you can only get so much out of a freshman. And what he did was he gave you a great drive, showed a lot of courage, and I think it's settled in now, pretty competitive. They got to get some points out of this. Get John Duraney, the kick is going to be a 41 yard attempt. He's three out of the four. Long as a 53 yarder. Hold is down, the kick is up, and no good. So the Wolfpack go 10 plays and get nothing after moving the ball from their own 35 yard line near the Wake Forest 20. And give uh, Dean Hoods, Demon Deacons a lot of credit because defensively they took a hit in the jaw on that. The Wolfpack gave them the best shot and they prevailed. Timeout on the field with 550 left in the first half and Wake Forest still hanging on to a two touchdown lead. Wake Forest 14 nothing over NC State here midway through the quarter NC State came in, came in here giving up 165 yards offense Wake Forest only game has already gained 156 on the corner and headed for more here is Idle and he kicks it out to the 46 yard line it's a 23 yard game and Wake Forest on the last scoring drive a lot of Chris Barclay in motion. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of rejection going on there. Man. First and ten. All at the 43. Lock the throw. It closes down. Almost intercepted by Mario Williams. Oh, it was on his sleeve, but it was in back of it. Mario's a big guy to throw around. Then we talked about the dimension, six foot seven, close to 300 pounds, athlete. Williams nearly picking off, blowing up the drive. NC State's got to hang their hat on this defense. Second down and 10. Man rush pass goes to Barclay. Barclay at midfield, and he gets a gain of about four yards on the play. Boy, man, second and six. Man, he lost him. That was awesome pursuit. I mean, he went after. Football fans, register for your chance to win a million dollars in the Bell South Kick for a Million contest. One lucky fan will be given the opportunity to kick for a million bucks during halftime of the Chick fil A Peach Bowl. Log on to jpsports.com to register and practice your field goals. Bell South, listening, answering. Third down and six. Wake up by two scores. Walk at the control. Throws to the flats, incomplete. Intended for Nate Morton. Good coverage out there on the corner by Jones. And also Devontae Edwards. Well, they have to have. They, they realize the position they're in. That man, Reggie Herring, the defensive coordinator. And sometimes, you know, you have one unit that's dominant, and they just got to hang in. I mean, this game won't be determined. It's not determined now. It'll be determined later in the second half. But you got to earn the right to be in the game, and their defense gave them a shot. Blackemeyer's on the kick. There's Tremaine Hall, who fielded a punt dangerously at the one-yard line and got a 19-yard return out of it. Blackemeyer to kick, kicks away from him this time. And Riley Swanson will down it at the eight yard line. Good cover, good punt cover. Yes, 42 yard kick that time by Plackemeyer, who is one of the top punters in the league. We've got two, we've got a lot of great specialists in this game for both sides. Yeah, two good teams. Yes, we do. Well, the most up to date information on the 2004 2005 Atlantic Coast Conference basketball season. Look for the long standing authority on college basketball, Street and Smith's. Pick up your copy of the Fact Field Street and Smith's College Basketball South, now available at newsstands throughout the region. ACC basketball rules the roost in these parts, and ACC football is making a mark with the addition of Virginia Tech and Miami this year, Boston College next year. There'll be a championship in this conference in 2005. It'll be played at Jacksonville. 
And we're just seeing the great caliber of college football in the ACC right now. Marcus Stone back to throw. Joel scales in pursuit. Stone gets out of the pocket and moves himself ahead to the 19-yard line. As both teams seem to be comfortable with the second guy in at quarterback. Well, the second guy right now is the first guy. And you look at the, you want to be in a huddle with a guy that will compete. And the one thing you can say about number nine is that he is a highly competitive individual. Well, he's going to be a highly mad individual now because there's a penalty coming up against one of his linemen. Holding. Number 15 to the offense. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat first down. There's a rare mistake. It's a rarity. Made by a, a rarity. Tight end. A rarity. You won't find that, folks, happening maybe once. Twice an entire day in hundreds of games. Tight ends are tight the most advanced. They're the most advanced thinking athletes in the world. Well, they're the brightest to... guys. The brightest guys on the field. And we're, we're hearing from one up here in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you did not always accept this to rule. Now. <laughs> First and 15. <laughs> McClendon. Helmets fly, and McClendon pushes his way out to the 20, or actually the 16-yard line. An 11-yard gain by T.R. McClendon, T.A. McClendon. I tell you what, that's a highlight run there. Kyron Bracey's a man, so if you knock his head gear off, buddy, you better better bring it. This is what they need. See, that's just pure attitude. He needs maybe a blood transfusion to some of his teammates right now to get it going. 132-pound. Junior out of Albemarle, North Carolina. Here he goes again, has the first down. Hit and brought down by Josh Gaddis. But not before he has first down yardage beyond the 20 to the 25 yard line. It's a nine yard gain for T.A. McClendon, who's got his eyes on the century mark this afternoon. It's so easy to say, but you want to get there in a hurry, but you want to panic. Great block on the edge. I knew John Richter would come back large. Yeah. <laughs> Tight end saves the day. He creates that play, not caving down the end. And the red shirt staying high. Demon Deacon's now giving up a little real estate, but watch him now. 5.8 a carry for T.A. McClendon, 58 yards and 10 totes. Here's Stone looking for him on the sidelines, a little too tall, and he had to look squarely into that sun over his left shoulder. Yeah, and it's going to happen. For everything a young freshman gives you in terms of athleticism, you're going to have to wait for some of the skilled things to, to come about. Well, what about setting up McClendon out there in the flats? Well, it was wide open. I mean, they couldn't have done a, anything better. I mean, you know, no one was only saying right now that was the right play. Everything worked, but, you know, didn't happen, didn't connect. Jay Davis on the sidelines. He's not made the mistake today. There's no Mazzoni. Yeah. Be patient. He's got, and they, you know, every coach in the country understands the scenario when you're trying to break in a young quarterback. Looking for someone to make separation in that position. Need your teammates to help you. Marcus Stone out of the shotgun. Hand off McClendon. Oh, yeah. a body. John Abadi stood him up. Stood him up. He's made three tackles for loss oh that I've God. counted. Jack Hammer. Wow. Pure canine. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. I love those guys in the middle that bring it. And here's a guy here that would rather go through an inside drill than, than and in practice. He loves it. Here's a guy that's a hit machine. Came in here with 31 tackles and not a starter. But he gets a significant amount of playing time. We're behind Pierre Easley at that middle linebacker spot. We saw Dean Hood on the sidelines. Defensive coordinator. Third down and nine now for NC State. Stone play action. Unports the throw complete. And that is Lamarck Barrett, the sophomore from Miami Springs, Florida. The crowd roars its approval. A pass for first down. It's the first time it's happened this afternoon. Hey, what? Boy, he put some steam on that one. It all starts up front with these guys in that offensive line. They look away. See, that's the key. Get a little bit of look off. Help your receiver out. Good route. Hey, you watch it, dude. You got the bunch formation. Inside guy kind of settles down. Ball right on the money. Good timing. Good throw. Good catch. First and ten. Stone play action again. Gaining confidence. Has a man downfield. That is Hall. Gaddis lucky enough. Hall had to go into his shoulder pad and get it. Still gutsy. Gaddis had no idea where the ball was. We watched that for years here. Rivers would have done the same thing on that one. Yep. You, you got to trust your guys on the edge, and receivers love it. All the great ones say, just get it out to me. I'll make it happen. Hey, oh. head in his hands. Can't oh, do any better than that. We watched Torrey Holt here for years. Yep. Make that catch. 
They've had a lot of great receivers at this school. And there's Josh Gaddis covering on the play. He's a sophomore from Durham. Stone, two out of six, one interception. Looking at second down and ten at his own 40 yard line. We got a whistle and a timeout being called. Looks like it's going to be called by Time NC out. State. North Carolina State. I'm having their own groupings, yeah. personnel. They've got one left. Well, we talked about Torrey Holt. One of the more amazing performances over the 98 years of this series took place right here some four, six years ago. Torrey Holt's 15 receptions against Wake Forest is still a school record. He finished the day with 179 yards. He set a new Atlantic Coast Conference record for single season receiving yards. He's playing on Sunday afternoon now. He wasn't the only one who had a great day despite the, the face mask there. This is Ray Robinson. He rushed for 164 yards, scored twice on the afternoon, and Jamie Barnett got in the action. He passed for 321 yards and two touchdowns. And there's Torrey Holt. Big game. Big game. His Holt. name on the facade here at Carter Finley Stadium. Coming up at halftime, Scott brzezwanski has got it all for us, sitting in for Mike Hawkwood this week. Yeah, thanks, Steve. We've got a lot to talk about at halftime, too. We'll hear from both coaches, Coach Grove and Coach Amato. Take a look at the ACC standings, some of our players of the week as well. A lot to stick around for you. I hope you'll join us. And, hey, you mentioned that play to Tremaine Hall. He wanted the ball. As a matter of fact, before the actual play, he ran down the sidelines to Coach Mazzoni and said, hey, give me the ball. And so they certainly tried to get it to him. Well, tried to pick it off sure the uh, sleeve of Josh Gaddis that time. Well, almost. Tremaine Hall, he's a playmaker. Yeah, he is. You expect that. And he, he almost pulled up. It was great coverage. But the key to this is that the kid, the freshman, had the courage to launch it. Yeah. And and there, was, it. there was no there were no risks involved because None. if he doesn't catch it, it's going out of there bounds. You go. And Hall last year had 133 touches. This year only 23 coming into this game. And they dearly want to get the ball in his hands. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast and copyright presentation. Any use of it without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports. There's the pass out into the flats. Not much there to Bobby Washington. In fact, there's a loss on the play. John Robinson comes up and makes a nice stop. Matt Robinson, rather, the redshirt freshman. Undersized defensive end. Demon down. And that is uh, Giles Tucker. He's a sophomore out of Dover, New Jersey, and he's looking at his, uh, he's motioning toward his left knee. You know, last week we did the Maryland Duke game, and Vernon Davis, uh, who I think has got to be, if not the one of the best H-backs in America, and a playmaker, mm -hmm. scored three touchdowns. Yeah. I mean, and those plays weren't all designed to score. He turned them into scores, and that's what every team needs is one guy that's just flat out better than the opponent. Well, both of these teams have them. Let's see what happened here. As we look at Giles Tucker coming in, there's 55. Oh, yeah. And, and he immediately made. holds that left knee as he tumbles over. Ah, I hate this. Giles Tucker had nine tackles, two for loss, had a sack, also had intercepted a pass this season. They've got three interceptions among their down linemen as far as career interceptions are concerned. He's been, and he's brought the heat. This afternoon, I mean, this kid is a player. Well, Dean Hood's got to find somebody else to go in there now. He's talking with Matt Robinson, and this young man has an interesting story. A redshirt freshman. They wanted him to take a spot as a linebacker, but he said, "No, I can play this position. I can play defensive end." And Tucker leaves of his own volition to the sidelines, so he'll take a little break there. He's in pain. He just did that for his folks. And he always would walk up with mom's watching. You know, you don't want to worry. <laughs> no. So you drag yourself up and you walk <laughs> off so she doesn't panic. But believe me, he's hurting. Jeremy Thompson, true freshman, is in there for him. This is the eighth play of this possession. Minute 24 left to go. Packed down to their last timeout, and they're down 14 to nothing. Here at home. Richard steps off the line. He's the wing. Play action stone. A oh, great rush. And he's going to be thrown for a loss and a sack there. And that's the freshman Thompson on the tackle. I'll tell you what. That was well structured. Yes. By Dean Hood and his, and his guys. They it was put, uh, pretty much under control. It was a controlled rush. Watching the play action. They didn't panic. I'll tell you what. Ron Bracey did it 
the way it's supposed to be done. Also providing some pressure there, Jerome Nichols, fifth year senior. That's a and big, that's a big, Steve, that's a big stand. Yes, it is. By Wake. I mean, they have sucked the life out of this crowd. Well, 15 plays, Doc, and a missed field goal and a punt. That's it. Duraney. Nobody's back for Wake Forest. And it'll roll, take a Wake Forest bounce out to the 21 yard line. It's a 47 yard punt, no return, and the Demon Deacons will get it back with 11 seconds left to go. Won't be surprised here if the Deeks take a knee and go into the locker room and talk it over. Corey Randolph coming back into the game. The last four series have been governed by the backup quarterback, Ben Mock. Well, this has been very interesting. Randolph, a running threat. And they are going to take a knee. Tight formation. One knee down, and the first half will come to an end. As the Demon Deacons have stunned the homecoming crowd here at Carter Finley Stadium. A pass interception and a long run. Domination. Yes, they have dominated the Wolfpack here in the first half. Mock going to the sidelines and into the locker room as the Demon Deacons try to surprise the Wolfpack for a second year in a row. Mock was responsible for engineering the long scoring drive. Scott Przewanski is standing by with Wake Forest coach Jim Grove. Coach, you told us yesterday it was going to take a total team effort for this group to win today. Couldn't put it all on the offense. You've had that team effort in the first half. Yeah, our defense has hung in there. We've played good in spurts. We've been a little soft in spurts. Offensively, we've had a couple drives that we put together. So I'm pleased with where we are. I hope our kicking game will pick it up a little bit in the second half. Any cause for concern you want to explain to these guys in the locker room? Well, absolutely. I mean, we just played a half of football. The thing that we know that uh, we start all over again in the third quarter, and the thing that we can't do is rest on a 14-point lead. This is a very good football team we're playing today. Okay, Coach Grove, thanks so much. That's Jim Grove, his Wake Forest Demon Deacons out in front here in Raleigh, 14 to nothing. Our halftime festivities are on the way from Carter Finley Stadium next. ACC football is brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. By Bell South. By GMC. By Progress Energy. By Cooper Tires. And by Sitco. ACC football is being brought to you by Sonic Drive-In. By bb and By Napa Auto Care Center. By Sitco. By Toyota. And by Geico. There's a construction at Carter Finley Stadium. Those are the Wolfpack Towers that will house luxury suites, a brand new press box. And there it is again. We'll be at the very top of that level, the fourth level. That's where we'll be when we come back to Carter Finley Stadium. Projected uh, finish date will be in 2005. It's one of the many new additions here to Carter Finley, which now seats 55,000. The next area of emphasis will be down in the north end zone where the AG Finley Fieldhouse is. Uh, there it's been aging and they're going to close in that horseshoe and add about eight to ten thousand seats well, defense it was nc state's calling card it has been wake forest calling card this afternoon jonathan abadi doesn't start but boy he finishes Sledgehammer. wow all he's done. it's crack helmets and it's been added to ta has had a heck of a half but b has been contested the red shirt freshman from powder springs georgia he does not start, but he does finish. That's what he's done today. He has 37 tackles on the season and one for loss this afternoon for the Wake Forest De Demon Deacons, who have held NC State to only 34 yards in the air. They've held them to 125 total yards, 91 on the ground, and only four yards a carry for Wake Forest. They've averaged 5.5 a carry. Uh, but what has blown up the Wolfpack so far is their lack of ability to move the ball in the air to complement what is a pretty good ground game. And we see Mock again, another youngster who Big Ben has come in and made some throws, some runs. 
It's totally a manhood issue now for the Wolfpack. They've got to man up at home, homecoming, in front of their home crowd. We're going to find out how good they want to be. Yeah. Because they're going up against an excellent football team. And I, I guess if you think back, it's easy to overlook weight. If you're current in your history, you should be frightened. If they're on your schedule, you better man up because they're physical, they have skill, they're extremely well coached, and they're not in awe of anything. I mean, they feel like they're the, the, under, the underdog wherever they go, but they don't play like it. I'm impressed. Well, there's Jim Grove. He's directed his team. They, uh, as Doc said, they, they are a team that uh, nothing fancy. They just get right up in your face, and they get after them. Chuck Amato watching his team go through some tough times offensively. He's turned things over to Marcus Stone for the most part, even though Marcus Stone has committed the only turnover this half. He likes the way the team responds, and uh, Noel Mazzoni told us yesterday, the team does definitely respond to the difference of energy that Marcus Stone brings to the huddle. And apparently Chuck Amato happy with it as well and wants to continue and see if they can have some success in the air to complement what they're doing on the ground. Well, Chuck's been through it. I mean, he's a big time football coach and he understands that the worst thing you could do is panic at this point. There's enough more than enough time. The question is, are the playmakers for NC State going to step up? And that's what we're all that's what we're talking about now. We're talking about the guys who are highly recruited, who are quote the elite athletes. Now let's show it. You know, show up. Now, Tremaine Hall has only had three touches so far this afternoon. He's had two passes for a total of one yard. Yeah, and he had a chance at a big play. Would have been a heck of a catch. Yeah, but he's capable of making that catch because he's got he's got those skills. But that's where you had it. Now for Wake Forest, now we're going to find out how nasty you are, because if you're as nasty as I think you are, then you put your foot right on their neck and yep. you crack it and you get it done. That's right, and you stick it right in their ear and you put more points on the board. And you send the homecoming queen with a mascara running all down her face. And that's what you do because, you know, you pick me for homecoming, but I'm a party pooper, okay? And I come out here, and that's what it's all about, man. We'll find out. Oh, I remember most of my college years except that one. All right, this kid goes. <laughs> yes. love, hey, when you pick you for homecoming, man, part of that, I, the staff had nothing to do with it. I mean, this thing's done way down the road. But I was insulted by that. You know, as a collegiate high school, yeah. what? You did what? Okay. So this is the beauty of it. Yeah. Now NC State's got to come out and defend it. Yeah, Wake Forest will come out here with a message. Hey, next year, invite Richmond back. For home there you go. Do not bring <laughs> us in for the party. First and 10 at the NC State 20-yard line. That's what NC State has done thus far this afternoon. The interception was costly. It was returned for a touchdown. It was thrown by that man, number nine, Marcus Stone. But they have moved the football. They moved the football on a 12-play march and found themselves down. Jay Davis now is back at quarterback. Marcus Stone on the sideline. Here comes a handoff. D.A. McClendon turns the corner. And McClendon is close to a first down. Matter of fact, he's got it at the 30-yard line. And down behind the play is a fine cornerback in Eric King. King is down. Wolfpack come out. So Jay Snorkeling. Davis. Davis gets the call to start the second half. Boy, Richter had a heck of a block once again. If it works on the edge, they a down block here, and then you see 15 kind of looking around, eyeballing it. Boom, get your guy, get your guy down. That's what it's all about. Warren Braxton, a good safety, but you can't make a tackle if you're on the ground. Now John Richter, of course, comes from fine stock. His father, Jim, was an Outland Trophy winner here and the first big center. center. Oh, yeah, big time. First center, center to win the Outland Trophy. There you see his name along the facade here. I'll tell you what, one of the they have a great display of all of their All-Americans in the Wendell Murphy Football Center as you walk in. I mean, that place is done to the max. And his father is adorned on the, the wall there. Right now, looks like a, a stinger here for Eric Green. You saw him go to the knee or to the lower leg of T.A. McClendon with the shoulder and the head, and they're looking him over right now. There he is. Oh, yeah. Eric King. Comes to the sidelines. Good player. Yes, he is. Seven Leader. career yeah. interceptions. Three-year starter for him from Woodstock, Maryland. He's a senior. And here's Jay Davis. 
watch most of the first half, even though he started. Hand off. Comes to Bobby Washington. And look at him find the hole. And another nine yards or so out to the 39-yard line. Tackle made by Patrick G. You know, folks, it's not that complicated. Leroy Harris left guard for the Wolfpack. Fine piece of blocking. It always comes down to your offensive or defensive line. I mean, they don't get all the glory, but they sure control the ball games. Just nice push out, great read by the block. Look at 70. You see Calmer up there, the pad on pad, and you get the little guys, Richard Washington down there blocking. That's how you move the football. Conductor of the Raleigh Railroad, they call it. It's a knockdown block of five yards or more. Here is Washington picking his way up to the 42 yard line, and that's good for an NC State first down. And up at Blacksburg, Virginia this afternoon, action is continuing there as the Hokies take on sixth-ranked West Virginia, and at the half, they got a 13-0 lead, similar to our game. And we'll see Virginia Tech taking on the Wake Forest Demon Deacons next Saturday, and it comes your way from Grove Stadium, which I understand is sold out and then some. Yeah, well, you better get there early. You better buckle up. Yep. These two teams, I mean, you don't expect to see the Hokies lose two weeks in a row. First and 10 from the 43-yard line of North Carolina State. Davis play action. Lots of time. Pass complete. That's Sterling Hicks. Hicks headed down the sideline. Dancing his way around tacklers. And he's in the end zone. Touchdown, NC State. Playmaker. 57 yards. Could this be the play that separates Jay Davis from the pack? Now you can talk all you want. You can build the facility. You can do all that. But you got to get it done on the field. And that's what turns the tide. That young man there blew up. And that's what I'm talking about. Great pass protection. And Jay Davis just makes stuff to claim for his job. Beautiful pass and a nice run after the pass completion by Sterling Hicks. John Duraney is on for the point after. And that'll cut the distance in half. NC State's back in the game. They're on the board, and they trail by seven. Sterling Hicks, a 57-yard pass and run combination from Jay Davis. And for Jay Davis, it's his fourth touchdown pass of the season. Hicks on his way down the right sideline, and the Wolfpack are back in the hunt. NC State gets on the scoreboard. Sterling Hicks, a 57-yard pass reception and run. It was the fourth play of an 80-yard march. Took them only a minute and a half to do it. They had 125 yards total offense in the first half, 80 yards that drive. And Jay Davis strikes with his fourth touchdown pass of the season. John Duraney into kick. Marion back deep in the end zone. He will not come out. Now let's take another look. At that touchdown once again on the pass from Jay Davis. It all starts up front with the big puppies, that offensive line. There's no pressure by Wake. And then a bad angle on the football by McGregor. And then you watch the run. Make a miss. Make the dead to the three stooges. One more. There you go. <laughs> Perfect deal. And now you see a man who's enthusiastic. See, the Wolf Pack, the back. Now we're going to find out if Wake Forest now, how tough, how nasty they are. Corey Randolph back in at the quarterback spot. Tereshevsky, the tight end, is in motion. Nate Morton split out wide to the left. And flattened in the backfield for no gain is Chris Barkley and the man who got him, John McCargo. Yeah, McCargo has been a beast. They had a couple big plays in the first half. The Wake Forest came out and averaged about eight yards of crack when they wanted to on the ground in the first half. They were dominant. Now see, this is, the, dude, this is the, the beauty about being jacked up. First half possession for Wake Forest, four punts, but a touchdown at the end of a 12-play march. Marion in motion, Randolph out of the shotgun. Four-man rush, pass complete, but Barclay went down before he even got the wind underneath him. And he's back to the eight-yard line. It is a loss of six more. And Wake Forest is headed in reverse. Well, when you give the number one ranked defense in college football some points, you're in a world of trouble. Great recognition there by Mario Williams. The way he can readjust and shift his weight and body at 6'7", 300 pounds is quite impressive. Wake Forest three for seven on third down, but they've got third and a mile and a half to go. 21 yards to be exact for the first down. 
Blitz is on. Hand off is Barclay. Runs into his own block on his thrown back at the 13-yard line. Little running room there of about four yards. Marcus Hudson to make the play and finish it off. And Wake Forest will make it three downs and out. Well, you know, Scott Preslowski talked to Jim Grove before the first half, and he told him, we got to forget about the score. Well, they got to forget about the score because <laughs> the, the, the Wolfpack at this point are loaded. I mean, they are fired up. Nakamoto peeled some paint off that newly painted wall in the locker room. I'd love to hear that speech. Blackemeyer at the end zone, kicks it out of there, low line drive, Tremaine Hall will take it. Tremaine Hall picking up some blockers on the corner. Squares his shoulders and is pushed out of bounds, but excellent starting position for the MC State Wolfpack. A 36-yard punt, a seven-yard return, and it sets the Wolfpack up inside the Wake Forest 40. You can feel the energy here. This place was dead in the first half. Oh, yeah. We had I mean, people leave. Yeah, we saw people leave. Yeah. You know, you can wear all the red you want, but you better get behind your club. Now these people are behind the club, and the club is absolutely on fire. At this point, Wake Forest, now they got to stop this momentum. They got to come up with a big play. They got to man up, because despite the score, the Wolfpack were in charge of this environment. Field position for NC State this afternoon. The Wake Forest 40. Back to throw. Davis has some time down the middle. Has a man. Complete Washington touchdown. Flag down. Got a flag down. Got a flag back. It may be coming back, and it is. But what a big play. Jay Davis went upstairs. And connected 40 yards downfield. The shoulders of Richard Washington tell you what he feels about it. Chuck yeah. Amato looking at his team again. The most penalized in the ACC. And this will wipe a score off the board. Holding. Number 71 on the offense. 10 yards from the previous back. Repeat first down. That backs him up to midfield. It's only the fourth state penalty, but it is a costly one as it erased a 40-yard touchdown pass. And I tell you what, it's tough. You're going to watch top of the screen here. Telly's not working on me, but I'll tell you what. The thing that you hate most about it is that it didn't appear to be threatening to the quarterback. Sometimes you hold to save your quarterback. I don't know if that time it was necessary. First and 20. And off of Clendon. Now it's Wake Forest with new life. Nichols made a great open field tackle. That was Jerome Nichols, and it's a loss of four on the play. I love college football because of the emotion and the pageantry and the color. And NC State was one play away from blowing the roof off this. Yes. And then, but it's taken away. Now Wake Forest has a chance now to suck the air back out of the stadium. They've known they can do it. They've done it once. It's not like they can't. But, buddy, I tell you what, just in one play. Now it's Jay Davis's aim here that uh, the Demon Deacons don't get a chance to breathe. It's the bunch formation, three wide receivers to the wide side. Throwing that no. way in a screen. A big to Dunlap, but sniffing it out. Warren Braxton. Boy, Warren Braxton was a man on that play, buddy. <laughs> he was out man, out number, everything going against him. But he made the play. Playmaker on defense. It gets you out here. There's, there's the bunch. You know, and, and playmaker on the other side of it, Tremaine Hall, just couldn't get the job done. I want to remind you that ACC football is brought to you in part by Toyota. Third down coming now for the Wolfpack. The penalty has backed them up to 27 yards to go. The defenses have made statements on both teams. Oh, yeah. Well, you talk about emotional whiplash. <laughs> These are deacons now, buddy. They have, they have been able to take. And now delay a game penalty against the Wolfpack. By the offense, five yards, third down. How about third and 32? Well, it's just like taking the boxer. They took State's big shot on the chin, staggered them. Yep. Right now, I think they're regained consciousness. Well, I'll tell you what, though. Had to. That penalty not been called on that touchdown pass. Whoa, this would have been a whole new situation. Here's the penalty situation. 536 doesn't look that bad, but when you take away seven points, 
It looks yeah. even worse. A little worried. Temporary structure we're on right now. The way that play started going, this place was about to erupt. Oh, yes, it was. They wouldn't have had to bring the cranes in with the new the demolition of what needs to be the ball. Third and 32. Davis over the middle. Pass completes the main hole. Just throw out the playmaker for giggles. This young man here has earned it. He's legit. And Jay Davis threw a perfect strike. Jay Davis is, is, is a man. I mean, he, he got tired of watching Marcus Stone in the ball game. Look at that, buddy. You oh, cock yeah. it. The ball is there. Good hands. And this is where Jermaine Hall separates himself from the pack. First and goal, a 58-yard pass play connection to Tremaine Hall. Richer in motion, and off of Clendon, touchdown Wolfpack! <laughs> T.A. McClendon carries it in, but the Wolfpack moved down the field on the forward pass. 115 yards in the air in the second half after only 34 in the first. Steve, this is serious. They scored twice in that series. Yes. One taken back by penalty. Now, if you deem Hood at this point for the even, even Deacons, you got to consider what's going on now. you got to find a way to stop this. Here's John Duraney with a kick that can tie it up. Out of a hold of Chris Young. It is up and it is good, and we've got a new ball game. T.A. McClendon's 30th career touchdown powers the NC State Wolfpack to a tie. McClendon, the man of the hour. Jay Davis with a big touchdown pass. McClendon over left tackle from three yards out, and the Wolfpack have tied it. Welcome back to our Sitco ACC game of the week. NC State tied it up at 14 all. It was a four play drive. 40 yards. They actually, as Doc said, scored twice. Had a touchdown call back, then went right back after it and got it. T.A. McClendon's three yard touchdown run following a 57 yard hookup from Jay Davis to Tremaine Hall that got them down to the three. Here comes the kick. And Marion will take this out of the end zone and Wake Forest will get it at the 20 yard line. And uh, John Duraney has been very, very efficient. Let's go to the sidelines and Scott Brzezwanski. Guys, you'll remember in the first half, we were talking about Tremaine Hall getting on his guys not to keep their head down. When they came out of the locker room at the start of the second half, he was the main one firing up the guys. He was saying, this game is not over. We're going to put some points on the board. And I'll tell you, he's got that offense fired up, and they have the points to show it right away. Well, the fans are hollering back. You have our attention as Manny Lawson and Mario Williams fire them up. The Wolfpack kick their stance on defense. First and 10, Wake Forest at their own 20. End around. Here comes Idle and there's nowhere to go. Mario Williams led the charge. And this is not the defense that you reverse the field against. No. Not this week. No, not this week. <laughs> Tank Tyler out there with the help. I'll tell you what, you know, it, the game is feels so much off emotion. I let the premium player. But there's just nowhere to go. And it all starts outside because they didn't give up leverage at all. Well, Lindsay, great job. Loss of 12, second and 22. Ball back to the Wake Forest eight. Randolph out of the shotgun. Idolette's in the slot. Has some time. Blitz is covered. Pass incomplete. Should have been caught by Willie Idolette. Troy Graham was in the neighborhood. I'll tell you what, Gibson as well. He tests his manhood on that one. And then you, what happens is that you talk about Troy, he's had a heck of a game. It was wide open for a moment. Let's see, let's listen. Big hit on Idolet. Well, Willie was thinking longevity on that one. <laughs> sometimes, down you, sometimes you make that move. Third down and 22. Wow, the NC State D getting back to that 165 mark. Here's Randolph, and he moves upfield to about the 19-yard line and gets a little punting room for Ryan Plackemeyer. 11-yard gain. Wake Forest has got to snap out of it offensively. Now, sure, they're being contested by the number one defense, 
in America, but they opened the game up with a lot of confidence. They had a swagger. That swagger's gone. Wake Forest has lost that swagger to the NC State defense for sure. And then the offense for a change has done their job. They yeah. struck through the air. Two big passes by Jay Davis. Well, momentum has no loyalty at all. <laughs> well put. Jermaine Hall drops it once. Comes up with it again. Gets by a block. There's a flag on the play. And he is brought down at the Wake Forest 47 yard line. It's a 53 yard punt. It's a 21 yard return. Uh, we've got a penalty on the play back at the NC State 42 yard line. So let's see what the call is going to be. It's going to take some off this good return. I'll talk it over, but you're right. <laughs> Sixth penalty of the day against the Wolfpack, but it's going to bring them back still in fairly decent field position. Yeah, but that, it catches you, it yeah. catches up with you. I mean, you can't give away that much field position. Join return. We have Hope, number 14, on the return team. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Devontae Edwards in hand-to-hand -hand compact. Timeout on the field with 7.18 left to go in the third quarter. Tied up, and we'll be back after this word from your local station. Oh. NC State with the football. The penalty marches him back to start the drive at their own 33-yard line. Jay Davis hands off. This is Bobby Washington. Washington springs the play out by John Abadi and Warren Braxton bring him down. We talked about Eric King's injury earlier. With more on that, let's go down to Scott Brzezmanski with our all tell sideline connection. Thanks, Steve. And you take a look in that defensive backfield, you won't see Eric King. He came out of the game, really had his bell rung. Wake Forest hopes to get him back out there. And I don't think it's any coincidence State has had some success going to the air with those basically three touchdown passes. It's because number nine is not on the field. He is that good a corner that sometimes teams won't even throw his direction. So if you're Wake Forest, you really want him to get healthy quick and get back on the field. Jay Davis checks the sideline, sees him over there. He's got a great point. Washington in motion. Here comes a handoff. Bobby Washington changes direction. It makes something out of nothing that time. Magruder, Matt Robinson on the tackle, and it's a gain of about five on the play. NC State so far in the second half. First touchdown right there, Sterling Hicks. And he goes 40 yards after the catch. Shakes off a couple of tacklers there. And into the end zone, a 57-yard hookup. Tremaine Hall's 58-yard pass set up a three-yard run by T.A. McClendon. Hills in for a score. And that's NC State's second half scoring on their first two possessions. This is the third possession, looking at third and two. Pass through the middle, complete. That's Washington. And the passing of Jay Davis has been a key catalyst for NC State here in the second half. That a big third down conversion. Well, that time the tight end number 80, T.J. Williams, cleared, went right up the up the pike, and it opened up a void. And that was a really nice design of playing Jay Davis. Now, I mean, he might as well be Joe Montana in his mind. I mean, he's on. I mean, he's feeling it. He's in that zone. We talk about athletic zone. And unless they put a helmet under his chin, I don't think they're going to stop him. First and ten at the Wake Forest 43. Play action. Davis with all kinds of time. Has to scramble out of the pocket here and gets maybe a yard as he slides to the 42. Patrick G makes sure that that's all he gets. See, there's no fear factor. Now, the Demon Deacons have got to bring back that roar. You got to be able to put pressure on quarterbacks. I don't care how, how old you are, how young you are. If you don't pressure them, they'll beat you. And that offensive line for NC State at this point is dominating. Second down and eight, Doc. Going on NC State at the Wake Forest 42. Hall and Dunlap, the wide outs. Davis again, the time to throw, and throws a strike to his tight end. D.J. Williams down to the 27-yard line. G with the defense, 15, 16 yards to T.J. Williams, the tight end. Another exceptional athlete at the tight end position. Good little look off at the end. Go up and get it, big fella. Good catch, good throw. And again, the protection is everything you want. Laser-like precision for Jay Davis. Yeah. Giles Tucker, you know, out of the lineup right now for the Deacon Demons. That definitely has hurt them. Yep, no doubt. 
And off McClendon, right up the middle. That opens up things for T.A. McClendon, and he is close to another NC State first down. They're in the red zone again at the 18-yard line. Josh Gaddis with the play. All right, and what I like about this for NC State, nothing fancy. There you see Calmer with the oh. down block coming down there slamming. You know, they don't see all the cute formations. They're not trying to trick anybody. They're trying to deplete people, knock your butt off the ball, and play football. He had back spasms and might have been held out today, but he's ready to go. And oh boy, oh, McClendon put down that time as he got to about the 15 yard line. And uh, John Abadi and uh, Clarence Bracey. I knew there was a body. A body. Look for the number. <laughs> D.A. McClendon comes to the sidelines. That's the beauty of this lineup for Chuck Amato is that he's got uh, plenty of running backs. Last year and the year before when T.A. went down, it was all on Phillip Rivers' shoulders. Now there are other places to look. And with Jay Davis being more efficient in the air, yep. this is a Wolfpack team that seems to be gaining confidence. Here's Davis, first and 10 at the weight 15. Play action, roll out left. Throws, and a wise decision. Yeah. We got a flag now. Flag down on the side. Actually, it's right out there where the offensive linemen live at the 13-yard line. Let's see what the call is going to be. It's away from the action, isn't it? Yeah. Ineligible receiver. The state just makes it hard on themselves. I mean, they, you have to be considerably better than your opponent if you're not going to play smart football. And eligible receiver, number 70 of the offense. It'll be downfield. Five yards, repeat first down. Palmer a little rambunctious that time. 60 year, got 60 year of eligibility because of the um, injury, uh, the illness that uh, caused the numbness in his shoulder and the turn and the pain. But he's back. Playing quite well today. Five yards on the play. First and 15 from the 20. Inside handoff, McClendon chances outside a block. And he is wrestled down at the 15 yard line. Patrick G is there along with Jason Pratt. That was a physical play. Physical play under resistance as well. I mean, Wake dug in on that one. But again, T.A. McClendon just has set his mind today all the way from the opening series that he was going to be a difference maker. T.A. McClendon. You see, there's the total yards in the third quarter and for the game. Wow, look at that. 192 for the Wolfpack. And they're knocking on the door in the red zone again. Second down and 10 at the 14. Pass to the flats complete. Richard Washington close to a first down, brought down at the six. Flag on the play. Richard Washington. Flag thrown at the 10 behind the tackle. With a lot of extracurricular in the first half. And State was involved in most of it. Let's see what the call is going to be. I did not see a signal, but we're going to get the story. Multiple fouls. We have a dead ball. Personal foul. Number 44 in the offense. We also have a dead ball. Personal foul. Number 85 on the defense. Those penalties will offset. Result of the play is short of the first down. Third down. Third down. So offsetting penalties. If they're playing on Sunday, they pay a fine. Well, I just think it's a useless call. Either get somebody that's guilty or don't do it at all. Because nothing's accomplished. You got T.A. McClinton, he's clapping. And we don't know who started or didn't, but I say be definitive in that. I'm not a big fan of that at no, all. No. Did nothing. Third down and one. Big play coming up here for NC State. They're looking to take a lead in this game. They've come back to tie it at 14 all. Hand off McClendon. First down near pack. There it came to So the Wolfpack knocking on the door again. Well, this is a ball game. Yes, it is. You don't like this, then you don't like football. <laughs> I mean, this is everything I live for on Saturday afternoons. This is bringing it here. On the ground, there you see contact, helmets flying off. Look at the McClendon. He's still trying to drag his way in there. Take in Dominic Anderson with it. Yeah. All right. First and goal from the two. Here's Bobby Washington. Here's the Wolfpack touchdown. 
NC State in the lead for the first time today. Well, I guess we see who has a mean streak. I asked the question, I put it towards Wake Forest. Who's nasty? Hey, NC State showing you right now that they can be as nasty as they need to be. And another Demon Deacon on the turf. Let's see who that is. With, uh, lost Giles Tucker and Eric King so far this afternoon out of that defensive alignment. And that defensive group has spent a lot of time on the field. They had 17 minutes out of the 30 we had to play in the first half. And since State has decided to play bully ball, that really wears you out. Yes, it does. You know, because they are not messing around. They're going to bring it off the off tackle, hit you in the mouth, and see if you can deal with it. That may be. Is it Caron Bracey? Could be. No, it's not. That uh, looks like Joel Scales. The, the fifth year junior out of Winston Salem and a. Uh, a good down lineman. They've already lost the guy who lines up next to him, Giles Tucker. So Joel Scales goes to the sideline, and Zach Stukes will take his place. You see him on the left side of your screen there, number 95. That's that's a tough loss for the Demon Deacons. 11 plays, 66 yards, five minutes and 20 seconds to execute. Bobby Washington carries the mail on a two-yard run. Jay Davis uh, connected on three more pass plays in that drive one a key third down pass play that pushed the sticks and got NC State into the red zone John Draney waits to kick the point after and coach Amato at halftime must have been speaking in tongues <laughs> tongue because, lashing no question because I want that speech I want to take drive around in my car with that throughout the week yeah <laughs> give it to my kids. They came out a different football team. Really what? Both sides of the ball. Here's the kick at NC State. 21 unanswered points. They have dominated this third quarter. Let's watch Bobby Washington again, the true freshman out of Miami. Hey, what? I sure hope those people we saw leaving, I hope they didn't break their necks getting back. <laughs> I'll tell you what, buddy. This is a crowd. This is a team to be worthy of. Tell you what, Bobby Washington cracked his way through John Abadi. Not many have done no. that today. No. And Josh Gaddish was there, but uh, Bobby Washington was more than their equal that time. Going in from two yards out for Bobby Washington. That's his uh, first career touchdown in an NC State uniform. So a big day for him. And homecoming is looking a whole lot better. And those that mascara, that mascara on the homecoming queen. I think it's dried up. It's dried up a little bit. I think <laughs> she went in at halftime and redid it. Oh boy, you talk about a makeover. Oh boy. Buddy, I tell you what. <laughs> that's the beauty of the game. Because you know, you you're never out of it, but you have to put the effort on the field. Yep. And I will tell you what, you talk about testing your manhood, finding out what you're made of. NC State now. We we know what they're made of. They're a tough group with a lot of pride, and they, they weren't going to stand for what happened in the first half. No, they weren't. They, 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 they'd seen this act before, didn't Been like that the done end. That. That's right. Yeah. Been that done that. I mean, they don't hang in with Virginia Tech on the road and go out and put 10 sacks on them and sack them and just, you know, and, and beat them, hit them on the chin as often as they did and not be an elite club. Yeah. But in the first half, Wake Forest manhandled them. They really did. They beat them on the punch on everything. Uh, the big help has come from the passing attack and the arm of Jay Davis, who may be going a long way toward winning that quarterback's job permanently this season. Here comes the kick. It's taken by Marion. There's Kevin Marion, and he is brought down shy of the 20-yard line at the 19. Hey fans, be sure and enter the Toyota You Pick 'em contest. Just go online at jpsports.com and click on the Toyota banner. Pick the winner of each game's or each week's game and automatically register to win an all expense paid trip for two to the college football game of your choice. It's the Toyota You Pick 'em contest. T.A. McClendon in the second half alone has had some great games. He's done the, the yardage in chunks, surging toward the century mark. There's his 30th career touchdown right there. And he's put NC State in position all afternoon. First and 10. And not much there. Yeah, I mean, I tell you what, that McCargo has been an absolute 
beast all day long. And you look at, you know, Tyler, Lawson, Mario Williams, all the way across the board, that front is Wolfpack. They're really starting to show off now and flex their muscles. They'll get some help, too, from some of the guys from the bench. Dwayne Herndon and Maurice Charles step into this formation. Loss of two. Wake Forest, a minus nine total yardage in the second half. Boy Randolph back to throw. He has some time. Herndon gets him. And finishing the job is Maurice Charles. But it was Dwayne Herndon who started it out. Well, Herndon can rush the passer. Now he was in on most of that action last week at Virginia Tech. Corey Randolph, a playmaker in his own respect. They got to dig down now because they need a play. They need to give the defense a blow. Third down conversion, three for nine. Wake Forest came in here converting 58% of their third downs to first. Third and 12. Down by a touchdown. Randolph back, blitz his arm. He squirts his way out of it, but he's shy of the first down. Graham makes the stop at the 27 yard line, but bring the kicker on. It's four downs and out again. Three downs and out again for Wake Forest. Speed on defense. It just it's, it's no replacement for it. Reggie here, I could have sworn NC State had 16 people in the field on that play. They come at you in waves. I'll tell you what, it's a piece of work. Third quarter coming to an end. Will it end in time for Plackemeyer to get this kick away? Probably not. And that is the end of the third quarter. So Ryan Plackemeyer will have to turn himself around. He's been the most active Wake Forest player in this second half. Jay Davis hasn't missed a pass. And the NC State Wolfpack have come from 14 town to lead by seven through three. A complete turnaround in our Sitco ACC game of the week. Welcome to the fourth quarter. Steve Martin here with Doc Walker and Scott Perswanski at Carter Finley Stadium, NC State. Leading Wake Forest 21-14. Ryan Plackemeyer in to punt on fourth down and four for the Demon Deacons. They've done pretty much nothing in the second half. Hunt nearly blocked. And the ball goes out of bounds. And let's see where they'll mark it up here. And they'll mark it up to the 29-yard line of NC State, a 44-yard kick. Let's take a look at our stats through three quarters, and you can see a big turnaround, especially docking that passing yardage. And total offense of 331. Well, the Wolfpack have dominated Wake Forest in every area in the one quarter. And what Wake has to do now is say, remember when? Remember when we were the dominant creature on the field? And they've got to try to reverse it. If not, then uh, nothing, nothing's happening. Well, they've got to do it with substitute people, too. They've got to substitute uh, Ty, uh, defensive end Jeremy Thompson, who's a true freshman. Using Raleigh Swanson, where they used to use Eric King. Here's an end around by Richard Washington, and Washington first down yardage, and a close line tackle by Josh Gaddis stops him from getting even more at the NC State 49 yard line, a 20 yard gain, and NC State now is surging with huge chunks of real estate on each play. Yeah, and they're utilizing their speed. And at this point, you know, Wake is emotionally, you know, you're down, you're, you don't feel good. And you, you deplete it, and then all of a sudden you get blocked. And those wide receivers, people, I've, I've talked about Doc Holliday's troops all day long. They block downfield. Jay Davis, 6 of 6 in the second half, 151 yards. The pass was not a factor in the first. It's been a big factor in the second. Right now, T.A. McClendon on the pitch, tries to turn the corner. Warren Braxton pulls him down by the shoulder pads. No gain on the play at the 49-yard line. Now you want to work the clock. And Jim Grove, I mean, again, no panic on the side of Wake. He realizes he's one big play away from rejuvenating his team. They need one stop, one tip, you know, something to go in their favor. And he can wake back, wake the monster up that was in the black and gold. Well, he's won 21 games in his career at Wake Forest. Ten of them have been come from behind wins, including last week's against Boston College. Second down and ten. Davis in a passing situation. Hands off of Clendon instead. And Matt Robinson brings him down just inside Wake Forest territory. A gain of two to the Wake 49. It's up third down. It's about stops. And those linebackers, White, you know, we talked about the Wake linebackers. And they've really got to come in now. And don't panic. 
don't give up a big play because NC State is one big play right now for busting loose. Yes. And you cannot allow that to happen if you wake for us. Third down and eight. DJ Williams in the slot tight end. Looks at Washington in the top side. Ryan Clark to the bottom side. He's been quiet today. Davis with time to throw. Steps to the side, pass complete to Washington. And he is in Wake Forest territory at the 42-yard line and very close to a first down, but likely a yard short. Wiley Swanson and Brad White come in for the tackle. And it looks like it's going to be fourth down. The crowd imploring the Wolfpack to go for it, but they'll send the punter out there. Their defense has been playing so well, Doc. This is field position. Oh, yeah. State's not, they're not afraid to punt. No. You sick those canines after you, so they're, they're, they're playing the field position game now. That's what Chuck Amato said. Don't be afraid to punt. Durani leading the league in yardage. You'll have to pooch this one. Idolette will run away from it, and it'll go into the end zone. I'll say this. That's a big stand by Wake Forest. Yes. Make no mistake about it. They stopped the bleeding. Yep. Now we're going to find out what they do in terms of their rehab. They finally stopped it. Now they got to put something together offensively. 42 yard punt. No return. Florida State leading comfortably in third down in Tallahassee. Virginia Tech blanking the sixth ranked West Virginia Mountaineers in the third. Another Brandon Pace field goal. Duke. One of those two will get a win today. Their first of the season. Florida easily over Arkansas. Wow. On the Hummer scoreboard. And Iowa big over Michigan State. Memphis and Syracuse, Oklahoma over Texas Tech, 14 to six. And Texas two and up Baylor, 37 seven. Here's Micah Andrews in for Chris Barkley, and Ben Mock is back to quarterback now, and he carries the ball up to the 24-yard line, a gain of four. Another Demon Deacon getting up a little slow. Last three possessions, three downs and out. Punt, punt, punt. Total yardage, zip. That's how good Reggie Herring's defensive unit has been this afternoon for the Wolfpack. Their manhood was tested, and there's another injury, and this is going to be Wesley Bryant. He is part of a trio of tackles that Jim Grobe uses, Steve Vallis, also Matt Brim. Vallis stays in for the whole game. Brim and Bryant alternate. Boy, they run the ball so well. Great run blockers. They can pass block. You know, this this game really is fairly simple to describe. Last year Wake Forest got real physical and got up and in NC State early. Mm -hmm. The same thing was happening today and NC State decided to get physical in the second half. Mm -hmm. They got yardage out of their pass game. Uh, their offense got just that much more efficient. And it just made them a better all around football team here. As uh, Wesley Bryant heads to the sideline, a junior out of Charlotte, North Carolina, 6'4, 293 yards. So pounds, though. It's Chuck Amato. That'd be pretty big for a guy, isn't it? Well, you know, you look at Chuck Amato, and we know Chuck's love is defense. But his offense has got to complement his defense. Reggie Herring, that coordinator over there, we, we know what Reggie likes. Second down and six. White is cheating up. He wants to blitz. Handoff goes to Micah Andrews, and Andrews gets an impressive gain considering what he had to run against after the 28 yard line. He ran right into the, 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 the belly of the, the yeah. blitz and was able to still move the pile, and that's what Wake could do in the first half. They were able to move the pile despite the opposition. They took the rush despite the opposition. They defied it. Big third down coming, Doc. Third and one. At the controls, both ends tight. Micah Andrews picks his way to a first down and more. Micah Andrews with one man to beat. Stiff arms Marcus Hudson and is brought down at the NC State 29 yard line. A 42 yard gain for this red shirt freshman from Duluth, Georgia. And that's a gut check. Yep. You, you want to find out what Wake is made of? You just saw it. Third and one. Nothing working for them until the defense gets a stop. They come right back in your face football. Nothing cute, physical. Look at that in the middle. Oh. Pounding people. That's football. Greg Atkins, huge block. Hudson, the only man to catch it. First and ten. 
Mock looking at the sidelines. Play clock still comfortable. Selman in a tight end. And off goes to Barclay. Barclay follows Blake Lindgren wow. all the way down to the 21 yard line. Wow. And Pat Thomas with the tackle. Look at the surge of the white shirts going into the sea of red. Buddy, I mean, that's not easy to do. And they locked up. And you see Atkins 66. I mean, these guys made up their mind that they were going to come out here and they were going to defend it. Defend it with offense and their pride. Second down and two. Wake knocking on the door of the red zone again. They're one yard out of it at the 21. Mock, quarterback draw, has the first down and more, and knocked out of bounds at the 13 yard line. It's a gain of eight, actually six. And we go quarterbacks on both sides. I want to go back a couple plays ago and show you the difference in this. It's all about the big, big boys up front for me. The offensive, defensive line. Then oh. you get a nice block. I mean, you, you talk about collision there. Near collision, uprooted by the offensive line. Whoa. Between Blake, oh, Lindgren, and Greg Atkins. Atkins. That was magnificent. Oh, she opened up. First and ten. Wake Forest in the red zone. And around Willie Adelet at the 10 and knocked out of bounds at the 5. Doc, you said it. Momentum has no loyalty. No loyalty. Gain of 8 on the play. Boy, Reed shows his, shows his makeup speed. Willie Adelet scores against most teams in America. Bone jarring tackle, but it's an 8 yard gain. Second down and 2. Adelet heads to the sideline. NC State makes some adjustments late. Second down and about two. Here comes Barclay. And Barclay surges ahead for the first down and comes out of the pile at the one, maybe the two yard line. So it'll be first and goal. Well, the state wasn't set that time. They had guys running in and off, yep. off the field, and they're lucky they that wasn't taken in for a score. Lowry with the tackle. Matt Lowry playing at the middle linebacker spot for Oliver Hoyt. You play Wake Forest, you better man up. First and goal. And off, Andrews now, can't push the pile in. Now you're tipping, so you can't tip down here. You can't tip against State, but you can't tip down in short yards goal line. You got to make up your mind. You got to slam it in or either go up and over. This is the ninth play of the drive. It started back at the Wake 20-yard line. They're at the NC State one. Lowry looking to blitz. Here is Andrews. Is he in? I don't know. I think he's rejected. Wake Forest says he's in. NC State celebrating like they stopped him at the one. And that's what they did. That was a function at the junction. Oh, Pat Thomas. Oh, my goodness. Woo, this is some football. There we go. See, there, low, low man wins. Low oh. man wins. I think it's Pat Thomas. Man, I'm right at the goal line. Line. Yep. And also your guy in there, Herndon. Third and goal. Andrews in, touchdown. Got a flag. We got a flag down on the play. We have a flag down in the end zone. Mike, Mike Andrews is making a name for himself. Most flags have been against the Defense. Wolfpack. Offside, pass declined. Touchdown. Big Wake play. Forest. 80 yards against the number one ranked defense in America. And the number one ranked defense playing very well. No question about it. You call your folks home after that and tell them you were part of that. Micah Andrews goes in for his second touchdown of the day. Matt Wisnowski is getting ready for the point after that'll tie this game up. What a ball game. <laughs> 9 08 to go. The kick is up. And it is good. And we've got a 21 all tie here at Carter Finley Stadium this afternoon. Matt Wisnowski puts the punctuation mark after the touchdown run of a yard by Micah Andrews. His second such run of the day. The surge enough to get the pile into the end zone and make this a new ball game in Raleigh. time these two teams go at it third oldest rivalry in the ACC and this one has been a good one Chuck Amato and Jim Grove watching their teams battle to a 21 all tie 
Grove's team took Amato's punch. Three Wolfpack scores in the third, but it's the Demon Deacons regaining the momentum here in the fourth as they drive 10 plays, 80 yards, and they stuff it in the end zone on Micah Andrews' second touchdown run of one yard for today. This is Marcus Hudson. Threads his way through white shirted defenders and finally is brought down by Edwards at the 25 yard line. That's a huge return. A huge return. Gives them a little bit of operating every, room. Every yard you get beyond 20 yards, it, yeah, your problem. percentages soar in terms of your ability to score points. And now, you know, this is kind of like the even mark. You know, Mayorga and Trinidad tonight know what's going on right now. <laughs> I mean, this is as good as it gets, it's folks. Bad. Wake Forest defense depleted by two injuries. Eric King, a mild concussion, and he's out for the day. Wesley Bryant on offense, left knee. He's probable to return. Jay Davis back to throw. Davis pass complete. Wide open. Richard Washington dropped at the 39-yard line. And it's a gain of 14 on the play. Boy, has Jay Davis been on the money in the second half. He has that little three-quarter delivery, a little bit like Phillip Rivers. You know, just a little yeah. bit. I mean, there's only one Phillip Rivers, but I like his action. The kid's confidence is there. Now we're going to fight. It's even. You know, the thing about being even is that you know, forget everything that's happened in the past. And you look at 840 or so to go to find out who wants to be king. He's eight out of eight from the field today. Here comes the handoff. McClendon turned and upended by Karan Bracey, but not before he picked up a good six yards out to the 46-yard line. Way too much extracurricular happening with State. Man, they got a game they can win a ball game, and it, a penalty could, could, could jeopardize everything now. Penalty took touchdown off the board, and they eventually got back. Spend too much energy after the play. There's McClendon who has scored his 30th career touchdown this afternoon. The bunch formation to the right. McClendon to the left. And rolls to another Wolfpack first down at the Demon Deacon 49 yard line. Tackle made by Jerome Nichols. Boy, boy, boy. Leroy Harris, the left guard. You talk about a surge. I mean, T.A. McClendon, I mean, he's everything you need because he enhances an offensive line. But they had to start somewhere. And that time they captured the line of scrimmage because in part of big number 64. Well, last week he had nine blocks of a defensive lineman that gained five yards or more. In other words, he set his counterpart on the he's defensive line back five yards. He's depleting guy. Yeah, they call those a Raleigh Railroad. <laughs> and he got nine of them last week. He's had more today. Here's the pass. That's the first one missed by Jay Davis, and it wasn't missed by much. Intended for T.J. Williams. Good idea. That's exactly where the old Mazzoni wanted him to go with the football. And they just didn't connect. Go to Yahoo Sports to see J.P. Sports ACC football games. Yahoo Sports also brings you live game audio each week for dozens of schools from every major conference. Listen to your favorite team's games all season long for only $4.95 per month with Yahoo Sports College Broadcast. Get it now at yahoo.sportsyahoo.com. Flat pass complete. Sterling Hicks. Nice. I like that. On second down and 10. I like that. Seven-yard hookup. State keeps moving the football because you put the ball in the hands of a guy that can make people miss. You get one guy to miss and the band's playing, and they run a tight bunch there on the strong side, and you just you know it's active, it's quick. There's McClendon over 100 yards. That's his seventh that's such big right there. That's game. big. You What's bet. big is that 4.4 against Wake. Third down coming in three. High ball game at 21. Jay Davis back to throw. Throws it. It is complete to the tight end. Williams still up. And they're going to blow it dead. But it's good enough for the first down. They never got him down, but they said his knee hit the ground at the 39 yard line. It's a four yard gain. Good for first and 10. But Another Chuck Amato would like to see more. Remarkable individuals. And we watched Vernon Davis last week with Maryland. Now, this is what I'm talking about. Big stud catches it, holds on, knee goes down. Yep. Great call. Great call. Great call. Take a lick and keep on going. Guess who hit him? It was the Devontae. Yeah, absolutely. Back in there again with another hammer hit. 
But it's a first down for NC State. Clock rolls down, six and a half to play here in regulation. First and ten at the Wake Forest 39 yard line. Might as well be in overtime at this point, where I see it. You don't want to settle for three because you got to get seven in there and put the onus on Wake. They have to go to full, you know, long distance. This drive started back at the NC State 25 yard line. It's in its seventh play now. The Wolfpack have eaten two minutes off the clock. They can do it because they can run the football. Jay Davis. Hand off McClendon. And McClendon carries tacklers down to the 35 yard line. Body is there. Also in on the tackle is going to be uh, Andrews. Brian Andrews. And you talked about Wake. They've had some injuries on defense. Playing with some guys, but I tell you what, they're playing hard. They certainly do miss Eric King. I oh, think yeah, they yeah, miss yeah, Giles yeah. Tucker. Miss, miss the starters. And Joel Scales is not in there either. Two starters down. Here's the pass complete to Main Hall. And it is going to be good for a first down or very close to it at the Wake Forest 29 yard line. And I call a guy a playmaker. It's because he moves the chains and he has a chance to break it every time he touches the football. Now you watch this slant right and at that point, too slow on the recovery of Wake. I mean, you got to jump on that. Magruder might have had a shot at, at stopping that, even with the completion. The main hall's fourth reception. Vince with some very positive yardage in the second half. It's first and ten. Ball at the Wake Forest 29. NC State with it and in control. Here's T.A. McClendon. Stop. And surged ahead. He was hit at the line of scrimmage and hit there by Brian Andrews, but finally brought down by a body at the we'll mark him down at the 27. I love the way you said that. Stop. And steal game. Because <laughs> yeah. that's exactly what this kid has done all day. They hit him and he keeps moving forward. He's had coming into this game 1,896 yards rushing, and they tally here at state that 869 of it. Have after, been contact. after contact. <laughs> That's a bull there, buddy. Yes, it is. Second down and eight. Washington split wide to the top. Jay Davis the throw has a man out there. Tight end TJ Williams. That's been open all day. Either Williams or Richard have been open for that down the seam pass. He gets it at the 13 of Wake Forest. Josh Gaddis on the tackle. A 14-yard gain moves the chains again. It's hard to stop. And the big, strong, fast, highly intelligent, good-looking guys play tight end. I mean, how do you stop? Him? Just I mean, and he got runs a good route. He runs a really good route. Comes out of it, flattens out. Ball's right there. So big, you hit him. You know, you hurt yourself. Free safety, late to get there. Davis 12 of 13 in the second half doc he's Smoking. been outstanding. First and 10. Washington in motion. Hand off McClendon. Going right. McClendon at the 10 now down to the 7. Brought down by Patrick G. But it's a gain of a good 6 on the play. He just choked you to death. It's going to be 3 minutes in the ball game. You know, it was 8.44 a few seconds ago, it That's seemed right. like. That's when the possession started. Yeah, they just start knocking you off the ball, and they keep timely passing. There's nothing cute about this. This is all physical football. And they just you know, showing you a will to win. 11th play of this drive. Second down and four. Bobby Washington. Stuck in the backfield. Set back for a three yard loss by Caron Brayson. Big play. Fifth year senior out of Jacksonville, Florida. Watched him make a number of plays over his career. Oh boy. You gotta trust the offense. You know, you gotta, you gotta trust it. You don't want a bad play. You just run within it, you know, and the Clinton, and that's the difference. Now they're different kind of backs. Washington is a speed guy. Paul Mazzoni, the offensive coordinator. Here's Jay Davis. He's been outstanding on third down here in the second half. Third down and seven here. Ball at the ten. Three wide outs to the top side. Going to the bottom is Davis. Davis throws for the end zone. Knocked away 
by Magruder intended for Kermain Hall. What a play by Marcus Magruder. Yeah, baller. And Magruder early today, 22 yard interception for a score. And that time he played it, showed his uh, his experience. You got a little bunch, you're waiting on the out route. He kind of bends it in, you got his own working for you. It doesn't happen quick enough, and at that point, he's able to recover. Yeah, just good play. This will be a 27 yard field goal attempt on fourth down. Don Durani to kick this up. No good. We remain tied. It's only his second miss of the season. Durani misses from 27 yards out. But it's two today. Yes. And Wake Forest holds on defensively. They get the ball when we come back with a score tied at 21. Now we are back. NC State chewed up six minutes and 16 seconds off the clock and came up empty. Their second missed field goal of the afternoon, and now it's Wake Forest. The door is open again by a missed field goal. That's exactly how they won last week. Here comes Chris Barclay, and out to the 30-yard line. It's a gain of 10, maybe 11 on the play. Marcus Hudson on the tackle. Let's Here see the missed field goal again. Here we go loop de loop. It's Duraney from 27 yards out. And yeah. he just didn't get enough of no, it. Got none of that. Wide left the first time, wide right this time. Okay, that's what happens. Now we're going to find out if Wake can take advantage of good fortune. And we've got movement. And a flag down on the play with 2.33 left to go. You know, fast moving game. We've had some penalties, but we've only had one turnover. Right, to the snap. Ball start. Number 84 offense. Five yards. It's only the third penalty against Wake Forest this afternoon. And again, a rare, rare mistake by a tight end. Three timeouts left for Wake Forest. John Abadi's been so tough in there. This is what's going on with him on the sidelines. Still is, really. They're chilling him off. Outstanding middle linebacker for Wake Forest. And Mock into play. He's got the pass complete to Morton. Nate Morton. And Morton gets back to about the 32 yard line. It was a first and 15 play. The tackle made by Devontae Edwards. Yes, Devontae Edwards, you talk about getting on your horse. I mean, Morton comes across it. He's trailing. And, buddy, he, he shifted gears and went and caught him. That could have been a first down throw to catch. Second down. Here's Matt Wisnowski. Will he be asked to decide this one? Barclay threads his way up the middle. And Mario Williams, Pat Thomas lead the charge. And Stephen Tullock in there as well. well Tullock, we have called his name a lot today. This kid is solid. And NC State, they're very comfortable with this. They know they can get the ball back with this unit. They feel like they can win with this unit. See, look at the shoulder square. Hey, it's pitch are perfect. You're going against that orbit formation. You don't always know exactly where the ball is. You have to trust what you've been taught all week. Mock out of the shotgun on third and long. Wake 5 of 12 on third down. Mock the throw. Blitz is on. Two backers are in. And Mock is down. You could have bet your lunch money on that one. Uh huh. Buddy, they're going to bring the dogs on this. You either better get it max protection or forget about it. Davis and Thomas get in the face of the quarterback. We've got a timeout on the field and a punt coming with a minute two left in a tie ball game in Raleigh. Score is tied with a minute two left to go. 21 all Wake Forest in punt formation. Fourth down and 16. All at their own 25 yard line. Plackemeyer back to kick that man. Tremaine Hall looking to bring it back. Will State block it. No. And Hall picks it up in the 32. Devontae Edwards with the block. And Hall is brought down and a flag is down as well. Josh Gaddis after a 42 yard punt. A 10 yard return by Hall, but it may be pushed back even further as Hall is slow to get up. Tell you what, man, this is against the Wolf Pack. And yeah. I hope that's just cramps. It looks like it could be cramps. Let's see what the flag is going to be all about, too. And blocking the back. That's the eighth penalty against NC State. And the 
It's going to back them up. They had fairly decent field position on this drive. And Hall During the return, up. number eight, block in the back, 10 yards in the spot of the foul, first down. And no one does this on purpose. I mean, you know, you're trying to give great effort, but you got to be smart. You have a game breaker as a return guy. So if you can't help him, don't hurt him. Let's look at the Hummer scoreboard here as Jay Davis gets ready to ready to bring the offense out. Florida State leading over in North Carolina. 38 16. They scored while we looked at it. Duke up by 11. The second at Durham. Just cramps with Tremaine Hall. First and ten. Here's Jay Davis back to throw. Final of the play. This ball game. You don't get no pressure yet. And uh, through that's Brian Andrews who comes up for the stop. Andrews for the tackle, and uh, it's a loss on the play of about two. It's the first pressure we Wake has demonstrated in the entire half. Yeah, and it couldn't have happened at a better time with the Demon Deacons. Timeout call by NC State. Now with 44 seconds left to go. In regulation. Now, North Carolina State's defense has been tough all season. Last week, it was the offense that got going. T.A. McClendon rushing for 93 yards and a touchdown. Big win at Virginia Tech. There's McClendon. The pack jumped out to a 17 10 lead in the third quarter. Two hokey offensive drives are halted by the pack D. They had to settle for field goals, closing the gap to 16 17. Then, with three seconds left, Brandon Pace had a chance to be the hero, but the 43-yarder failed. Chuck Amato cheers. The band plays on, and the bus ride to Raleigh almost non-existent. Had to be sweet. There is nothing better than to survive on the road, get a win, and get the transportation going back because you realize how fortunate you are, and you just broke a lot of hearts. Nothing like road kill. Durrani would love the chance to get it again. What this would be a game that uh, he'd remember forever if he hit one the winner after missing two. That's right. I believe me. You don't have to hide next week around campus. <laughs> and find he, in, find he in the homecoming <laughs> queen in the same yeah. place. No question. <laughs> You're looking for makeup artists. <laughs> we can walk around campus. All right, NC State uh, down to their final timeout now with uh, 44 seconds left to go in regulation. And the prospect of overtime grows larger. Dawkins and Clark are split wide to the top side. Keep my eye on Richard Washington and I will wait. He's split wide to the bottom of your screen. Ray Davis looking at Washington. And Wiley Swanson brings him down out to the 36 yard line. It'll be a gain on the play of about seven. And here's what's going on up in Blacksburg. Virginia Tech. West Virginia scored a couple of touchdowns, but the Hokies are trying to pull the upset. And we'll see them next week. They take on Wake Forest at Richard Salem. Washington again. And he's got the first down and he stops the clock with 18 seconds left to go. Richard Washington, at this point, he, he's the guy who can make it happen. And at this point, you know, you got 19, 18, 19 seconds. They'd love to go pump and go. But so far, Swanson hadn't bitten at all. I mean, he's allowed to keep the game in front of him. They want to get to overtime. First and ten. All at the 40 yard line. Crowd seems resigned that it will go overtime. NC State with one timeout left. Davis, who's thrown passes of 58 and 57 yards, misfires to the tight end that time. And rolling on the ground in pain, it seems, is Leroy Harris. And Doc, you've talked about that young man this afternoon several times. Road grader. Conductor of the Raleigh Railroad. Yeah, he's had a hell, heck of a game, man. He's he's been, um, and you need that, you know, while your offense has struggled, like they struggled in the first half. Both teams so well coached, no one lost to composure. Lined it up, and that young man, Jay Davis, came through with the second half. He missed only one. That's his second incompleted pass of the afternoon of the second half. He's helped. Uh, Push this club along. OJ won't have to worry about rotation next week. The way he's played. Yeah. I think he solidified himself. All right. 15 seconds left to go. Second and 10. NC State still armed with a timeout here. 
Four wide outs. McClendon back to protect. McClendon gets the pass in the flats. And he's held shy of the first down. Marcus Magruder. That keeps the clock rolling. NC State will try to stop it here, and they will. They'll call their final timeout. Well, and that was a tackle by Magruder. Magruder, wow. of course, scored earlier today. He had a last possession. He knocked the ball down. And then you watch. Watch him. That's the reaction. Come up. Set up. And hold on for dear life. You just stopped a wreck right there. Homer comes to the sidelines. Deeks trail Boston College 14 10 when they got the ball on their nine yard line. Time running out. Junior quarterback Corey Randolph led the Deeks down the field after crossing into BC territory. The Deeks converted on a fourth and one. And then the next play, Randolph hooked up with Willie really Idolette for a 40 yard touchdown and the go ahead win. Wake, Doris, Wake Forest defense seal the deal and the Deeks win it 17 14. Right now they've got to defend on what probably will be the last play of regulation. As NC State has called their final timeout. There's Dean Hood in the middle of the defensive huddle. He's the defensive coordinator. His defense has, uh, has had its great moments this afternoon, and he's had to do it with the patchwork lineup, losing three defensive starters to injury in this second half alone. No, they're well schooled. I mean, they, uh, they're, I mean, when you lose people, it's very difficult on you. But I give State a lot of credit for creating some big plays here in the second half and that. Uh, give Wake a lot of credit for taking their best shot and they recovered and moved forward and got back into the floor of this ball game. Marcus Stone comes back into the ball game replacing Jay Davis for this probable last play of regulation. What could be up here. Davis obviously has thrown, shown that he can throw the ball downfield. Stone is in there. No timeouts remaining for NC State. Score tied at 21. Yep. Different Cade, different quarterback. But I, I can't wait to get the explanation on that. You got a guy who's hot. You take him out of the ball game in crunch. Chuck Amato talking things over right with Doc. Snap. Hall. False start. Number 44 on the offense. Five yards. Still third down. Please put five seconds on the clock. If you're going to run that quarterback draw, right? The Stone's your man. Yeah, we've shown us the buddy. He's got some game when it comes. He can run the football. You think that quarterback draw gets you 60 yards? No, but I'm trying to figure out the rationale on it. I'm trying to be <laughs> open-minded. Neither do you know? I. Yeah. <laughs> trying to be open-minded at this point. And they know a lot more about their personnel than we do. Yep. Third down. This is probably the last play of regulation. And if it's successful. Which it is not. Stone is sacked back down to the 24 yard line. And time has run out on regulation play, and Stone is on his back and, and hurt. gets up slowly. A loss of 11 yards, and that ends regulation. Well, stay with us. We're going to be right back with overtime here at Carter Finley Stadium. The Sitco ACC Game of the Week has been brought to you by Sitco, fueling the greatest of American sports. By Hyundai. By Geico. By Sonic Drive-In. By Hummer. And by Napa Auto Care Center. As a buzz in the crowd here at Carter Finley Stadium, we've gone 60 minutes and haven't solved a thing. Wake Forest and NC State Can't are still tied James at 21. Very good. good game, guys. Okay, anybody have any questions? We're going to go into overtime. Everybody familiar with them? I think everybody's going on here. We're going to have one timeout aside per inning. We'll treat it like a baseball game, right? It's per inning. One team will get a chance to, to go on offense. The next team will get a chance to go on offense. If you don't score, we turn it over. We'll go into second overtime. Starting with the third overtime, you cannot kick a field goal. Well, I mean, an extra point for the camp, right? You got to run it to go through the tail. Well, who's going to call the toss? Again, that's a head, and that's a tail. That's a head, and that's a tail. Tails. Tails is your call. Tails he called. Tails. It's a tail, and it is a head. Defense. You want defense. Mm -hmm. you, want, you want a 
go this way. Yes. All right. Okay. Typical. NC State will let Wake Forest have the ball first. NC State has the better record in overtime. They're five and four. Wake Forest 0 and three all time, and they've already lost an overtime game to Clemson to start the season. Those are the rules, as Tom McCreese explained. Alternating possessions. You start at the 25, so you can get a first down. After two overtimes, the teams must attempt the two-point conversion. So there you go. Last overtime for NC State was a loss to Florida State on November 15th. Let's go to the sidelines. Scott Brzezwanski. Steve and Doc, you heard that loud surge from the crowd. The reason why was head coach Chuck Amato walked out to about the 30-yard line and started waving his hand saying, wake up, wake up, let's have some noise. And the crowd responded, and they're certainly hoping the home field will pay dividends here in the overtime. You know, Scott, it was a strange final minute of regulation. It was like, all right, we're headed to overtime, and nothing's going to happen here. And the crowd did kind of like lull itself to sleep. But they're back in it now. Corey Randolph in at quarterback. This bar play straight ahead, and he is brought down at the 23-yard line. This would be interesting, Doc, because both of these teams' offenses, especially on the ground, have moved pretty efficiently this afternoon. No doubt about it. It will all be predicated, Steve, by what kind of success you have on first down. Wake only had about three yards of success that time. But if you get in an obvious passing situation against the Wolfpack, you just dig your own grave. Wide let on the end around, and they are waiting for him. Maurice Charles was in the backfield. Said, go ahead, go ahead, give it to him. <laughs> I'm here. No gain on the play. They just come out of it. It seems like there's about 15 of them on the field. You see those red shirts. Charles starts a great penetration. That time, Tank Tyler. Defensive tackle, good job. Reestablishing the line of scrimmage. Third and eight for Corey Randolph. This is what you didn't want to be in. At the throw, little inside screen to the tight end. Tereshevsky. Oliver Hoyt in there on the tackle. Tereshevsky gets close to the first down, but not enough. He's at the 18 yard line. So let's see. It's going to be the field goal unit coming in. It's a nice call, but now you pay for, for the loss. And you see 22 gets the beeline on it, and then again, speed kills. Matt Wisnowski, five for seven for field goals thus far this season. His career long is 43. This will be a field goal length of about 35 yards. Here's the kick, it is up. And it is no good. What a recovery on the high snap. I thought it, it did a great job of turning that around. Steve Hill, the holder, catching the high one. Wisnowski does not make it, so now it's NC State's turn. Oh, yeah. And it's very difficult there, you see. To not get in from the 25, but it goes up and oh. talk about a game of inches. <laughs> Now you don't want losses. I mean, you at this point, it's 44 right, 44 left, 44 in the middle. Kick it, go home. Yep, 12 with a kick. Get on the bus. First and 10. NC State at the 25. Here comes McClendon. Breaks tackles and gets down for a first down at the 14-yard line. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Boy, how do you stop that? A determined back. An offensive line that they won the snap count. They teed off and reestablished that line of scrimmage. Tough to deal with. McClendon, his seventh 100 yard day in his career, 125. He's had a touchdown. And a Wolfpack now in business at the Wake Forest. 15 yard line. McClendon again. Straight ahead to the 10. They'll either pull it in, or if Wake can stop them, they'll put their kicker on the field for the win. And that'll be it. 44 right, 44 left, 44 yep. in the middle, kick, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's really what it comes down to, unless sure they does. blow it. Well, the one thing that you don't want to have happen is a turnover that can be returned for a touchdown, then it's bye and the other team's on the bus happen. And their kicker's hoping that T.A. scores. Yeah. <laughs> 
Second down and five. Here's McClendon again. Wake Forest stiffens up this time. Nichols is in on the tackle. Jerome Nichols leads the charge. And Nichols has played uh, very strong today, as has Brad White and John Jonathan Abadi. There's McClendon. 28th carry of the afternoon. Pushes the stick down inside the 10 to the 9 yard line. Workhorse. NC State looking for their first overtime win of the season. They are 5 and 4 in overtime all time. And Wake Forest, as we mentioned, they are 0 and 3, including 0 and 1 this season. Third down and 4. McClendon's in the backfield. Guess who? Jay Davis, the quarterback. McClendon, touchdown, State! Game over. that threatened to cripple their season a year ago as avenged and the Wolfpack are now three and one and their second ACC win after a dramatic win over Virginia Tech a week ago this one no less dramatic in overtime but Clendon from eight yards out his second touchdown of the day Look at the and it's grader. NC State 27 21 Woo. back after this word from your local station 55,000 homecoming fans are happy indeed as NC State beats Wake Forest in overtime 27-21. Our Napa Auto Care Center's players of the game for Wake Forest, Jonathan Abadi was all over the field. Seven tackles, one for a loss. And for NC State, Jay Davis brought his Wolfpack back to life in the second half. He was 13 of 15 in the second half, 16 of 21. And let's watch Doc McClendon go in from eight yards out. And right behind, guess who? Leroy Harris, road grader, number 64. I mean, he was dominant in this ball game. And, of course, T.A. McClendon, who's the blood and guts of the Wolfpack. Coming up next week here, our Sitco ACC Game of the Week. We'll take the Virginia Tech Hokies coming to Wake Forest. Check your local listings for the availability in your area. For Scott Brzezwanski and Doc Walker, I'm Steve Martin reminding you that you've been watching Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference football, NC State 27-21.